Good evening and welcome to the Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting, December 12, 2018 at 605 here in the municipal offices in Deerfield. Uh, we'd like to start our meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. This meeting is being recorded. Uh, first thing, we have some minutes to approve. I make a motion that we approve the minutes as presented. There was one correction that Diana made. Okay. Um, go ahead. Those are from October 24th? Yeah. Okay. No further discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Chris, do you want to come up and I guess we can. Touch the mic. I'm qualified to touch the mic. <laughs> Show us how. Thank you for uh, giving me a few minutes to sort of go over this. I wish I could be here under different circumstances, but uh, this is one of those things that very much affects my operation, our operation, and the future of PEG access nationwide. And, and I, I know that Wendy probably has briefed you, but I'll just give you a brief overview. The Federal Communications Commission is considering a rule change that, if enacted, could devastate funding for public access television across this country. Uh, as we know, the way it's funded now is anybody who has a Comcast account pays in a cable access fee, essentially a franchise fee. That money goes to you, and then we bill you quarterly, and it goes to us for operation. The FCC rule change, and there's a couple of, of components to it, but the one that I think is most significant is, right now, under the current rules, the cable company has to give us access to channels for free. 12, 15, 23 are free to us. Uh, if this rule changes enacted, it would allow the cable companies to effectively charge for the space on those channels and deduct the cost of that from the franchise fees. So the franchise fees, instead of going to the town, would go back to Comcast. And the percentage is un unclear at this point, the exact hit. Some are estimating it could be a 40% hit. Some are saying it could be a 90% hit. Some stations could have their access co uh, money completely wiped out by this. So it's, it's probably the single greatest threat to this medium of public access television since the Cable Act of 84, certainly. And the fact that you just signed a 10-year cable contract with Comcast is moot. And Wendy and I disagreed on this, but it is moot because that contract is based on FCC regulations as they exist when signed. If the FCC changes the rules, then they can take our money, basically, and give it back to Comcast. So it's a pretty significant situation. Now, this was one of those things that got trotted out there very quietly by the federal government. The initial approval was given in September. That started the window on a 90-day or a 60-day comment period that was supposed to have expired in November, November 14th, I believe. The FCC extended that to this Friday, the deadline. So if anybody wants to comment on this, the deadline is Friday. Um, Wendy and I have been on an email thread with a bunch of different people who have been weighing in, and the, the general feeling is, at least at this point, that the FCC may hold off on making a ruling on this until next year. They could very easily make the ruling this month, which would affect the first quarter funding, theoretically anyway, from Comcast. Uh, Ed Markey, our senator, has gotten 10 signatures of his colleagues on a motion to stop this. It's very similar to net neutrality in the sense that the Senate was able to check the FCC on net neutrality with a vote of the Senate, a majority of senators, a majority being 50 plus one. Um, I think the Senate could weigh in on this, but the difference here is that public access television, though it's important to us and important to towns, is not a sexy topic. It's one of those things like, oh, you know, if, if it disappears, People won't know about it until they can't watch the select board meeting the following week. 
And then you'll get calls like crazy. Where is the select board meeting? Where is the polka? Where is the sports? It's not a sexy topic. It's, for some reason, it's not been a big story in any kind of media. Uh, and, and it hasn't been a big story on the radar of the usual advocacy groups that scream bloody murder when Jim Acosta gets his press credentials ripped uh, from the White House. But you're talking about ripping local access television from every community in the country, and no one's blinking an eye about it. So we have to do what we can as communities to let the FCC know that this is not OK, which is why I'm asking this board to follow the lead of Conway, Sunderland, and tonight, Waitley, and send a letter to the FCC saying, keep your hands off our public access. Um, I actually believe it's a huge, huge deal. And um, so Wendy, thank you for putting together this letter. And um, I certainly wanted to bring it up to the Rural Policy Advisory Commission tomorrow night because I think it's really a huge thing. We, we are required, and, and I mean, I think it's very important that people watch or have the ability to watch cable, um, our meetings on cable, and that we have a record of them. But we're required by the Open Meeting Law and, the, and Freedom of Information Act to, to provide all this information. And I don't know how we're going to do that without th this, you know, cable, you know, you taping our meetings. I, 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 this is just, to me, it's a horrible, horrible position that we're in. And this is so serious. I think there are people that work on my staff who don't understand why I'm so adamant about covering as much government as possible. Well, who's watching that? Who watches that stuff gavel to gavel? I got news for you. Um, whether they watch it or not, I know, that, I know the town officials depend on us. Like, I've walked into the Sunderland Town Administrator's Office on numerous occasions and had her, watched her watching our meeting coverage to get minutes. And they change the rules on you, and if the FCC changes the rules on us, um, it's, it's not going to be a, pro, a, a service we'll be able to provide. And another part of this that is not part of the story, but it should be, is that a lot of kids have gone through our program. Kevin Murphy's done a great job at Outreach at Frontier. Um, and a lot of young people have gone through FCAT's student program and are producers now. And I can tell you from experience as a member of local media that there are absolutely no areas left where young people can get an entry into hands-on experience working in media technology except public access television. Radio stations aren't an option anymore. You, know, you can create a podcast at home, but where are you going to learn how to edit do all the things, create a story, craft a story, stage a meeting, run a concert, run a basketball game. It's an important service. It's an underutilized service for sure. Not a lot of people know about it, which is why it's not a sexy topic, why this isn't a front page story. But I'm doing my best in whatever rude, crude way I can to get the story out there as much as possible because it's really important, not just for FCAT's future, but for the future of all these access stations countrywide, nationwide, countywide. I, I agree. So uh, since I'm not really up on this topic, are you, are you saying that the FCC is just changing the rules or are they being pressured by Comcast to change the rules? It's absolutely something that Comcast and other cable companies have been lobbying for because people are cutting okay. the cord. And when you lose revenue, any company is not just going to stand and pass. They're going to do what they can to recoup whatever revenue they can. This means, I mean, our budget is $160,000 in change a year from four towns. Not a lot of money to cover four towns, by the way. But if you take all the money that goes to all the peg access stations nationwide, we're talking about millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars, potentially, that would go back to the cable companies. So yeah, they've been pushing for this for years because they, they're, they're a dying industry. And I'm going to tell you right now, if this happens, this medium will never come back. I don't care who wins the White House in 2020, how the FCC changes, it will never come back. And I don't think people understand that. I know. Do uh, now you say these funds come from uh, people who have Comcast bills. Will a fee on the Comcast bill disappear or probably not? Probably not. It'll probably just get diverted. Uh, and that's the a funny thing about this. One of the arguments in favor of this rule change is that, well, it's a hidden cost to cable people. People who have cable, 
uh, these franchise fees are hidden costs they aren't told about. The other argument is that towns like this one, I'm not saying this one specifically, but that towns take this money and don't use it for peg access. They use it for to patch roads or to build sidewalks or to pay for it. It's not, of course it's not true. It's ridiculous. It's a straw man. But that's the argument that's being used by advocates for this change. So, uh, yeah, I, the, the, the franchise fee won't go away. It'll just go back to Comcast. Can I ask a question? Sure. Um, I posted it, and you saw some of the feedback that I got. People were saying, well, the, you know, the mediums are changing, and you know, how do you respond to that? Now, people, media is changing. They're going elsewhere for information, not television. So what, uh, what are the options for local coverage? Or well, I mean, if, if, if the worst case scenario were to happen and, they, and all our funding were to go away, you still have the infrastructure here to be able to run meetings if you want to. You won't have anybody to do it. One of the things that we've done since I took over at FCAT and made a, a, a real priority is to create a YouTube presence. And, and I do believe the industry is heading in that direction. I think cable is a dinosaur. It's our dinosaur, but it's a dinosaur. And eventually, the technology will change. <coughs> but the funding mechanism for towns like this to be able to have access to the airwaves or have a budget to be able to have somebody record these meetings and provide them to people. Uh, that very much it should remain, if possible. Um, I can tell you that I'm on the Greenfield Community Television Board of Directors as well. Greenfield has a municipal light plant uh, high-speed internet service. They want to put GCTV's channels on their new TV product, which is being rolled out next year. I'm not saying that Deerfield wants to go with an MLP and try and do, it, do a a uh, high-speed thing that way, but if you did, that would be a mechanism where, at, where FCAT could exist in the future. But the truth of the matter is, technology being what it is, the funding mechanism to keep this agency going has to be through this process. And if it's, if it's taken away by FCC rule changes, I, I don't think that this community and the chair of the finance committee is here. I'm pretty sure this community is not going to be wild about the idea of making $80,000 in taxpayer money available to keep public access on in Deerfield. But that's the, that's the situation you're going to find yourself in. It's going to ultimately be, if you want to keep this service, if they cut the funding or they change the mechanism, then you're going to have to pay for it. Now, there is a business model in some towns like Hadley where Hadley does run the public access station. So it, it can be done that way. Uh, I would not say it's the best way to go about it. I wouldn't say the mechanism is necessarily uh, effective. And I think that every year, you're going to, never is a town going to have enough money to be able to do everything. And access would probably be relatively low on the priority scale at that point. This is the best fiscal model for preservation of this service. But it's also a pot of money that cable companies can get if they can get the FCC to change the rules, which is why we are where we are. What is really disturbing is, you know, if you look around, there's no reporter. We don't get very, you know, accurate coverage in the newspapers anymore, and people don't get the newspaper hardly. Anymore. Well, this is the argument. And so I, this I, is like huge. Yeah, I, I said this to the Conway Select Board too. You know, and nothing against my friends at the paper. I have people there I know and I've. Oh, I know, for but years. they just know. But we're, the, we're it, man. We're the only game in town when it comes to gavel to gavel coverage. And we don't report on this stuff, we just put it out there <coughs> and let people view it. Sometimes we'll do a, a special here and there where we talk about individual issues. But for the most part, you know, this is a service we provide and we work hard at. And the, the ones that I feel the worst for are the kids that work for me because we have a, a great group of dedicated people. I don't have a huge staff, but the people that I have are tremendously dedicated, very talented. They take it seriously. They work hard at it. And they're going to be the first ones fired because the FCC wants to stick more money in the pockets of big companies. That's a travesty as far as I'm concerned. It's an absolute travesty, which is why I'm being such a pain about going in front of boards like yours and screaming to the rooftops that this has to be saved. No, I wanted you to come. I, no, I've been I worried about this. And I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to speak on this. I, I've been doing a lot of speaking on it. I've been going to different towns outside of this area 
uh, and talking to people in Montague and in various communities to try and get somebody to be aware of this. There are people in my own profession who don't know about this. You know, I, I spoke I in front of a cable advisory committee and they were like, what? They're going to do what to the funding? It's, it's not on the radar of anybody. And when it happens, it's going to happen fast and you're not going to see it coming until you start getting calls asking you why your select board meetings aren't on live on TV anymore. And on this letter that we wrote, Wendy, that uh, MB docket number 05, is that what the... The, uh, FCC you have to make sure you put the yeah. docket number in there, otherwise it is yeah. going to... Uh, so that relates to this particular... Yes. Very much. Um, I make a motion that we send this letter. Oh, can we, sure. um, after we sign it, can you scan it and get it down there? Uh, there's this, um, I've been in touch with Bill August, who I've known for a long time. He used to be a cable commissioner here in Massachusetts. I guess we don't even have one anymore. We don't need it, right? And he's a cable lawyer and works for municipalities with contracts and stuff. And he's, he's been great. You know, I ask him a question, he writes back, I send it out to Chris and others. At any rate, there's a very specific way to get this into in front of them, and I'll take care of that tomorrow. You sign it, the actual letter will go to the uh, senators and Congress, right. congressmen. I mean, I, I, I'm very much in favor of sending that letter as well. But I, I think, since I, I really don't have a good background in this, <clears throat> don't we negotiate these contracts every so often? Yeah. So yeah. couldn't we just if Comcast goes down this road and say, look at now, you know, you can take this money. We need something else to do. You know, I, you I have to refund this. I, I would refer you um, to your own contract. And I think if you look at that contract, you'll find language that says this contract is contingent on FCC regulations remaining the same. Right. So if the FCC changes the rules in mid game, so the contract's not worth the paper it's written on. Right. So we, then we, we would, could get a new contract. I mean, but what leverage do we well, have over Comcast the, to say you can't sell it in our the town? The meat we of can, the issue so. is a little bit yeah. confusing and difficult to uh, articulate, and it has to do with the value of how they the uh, being they're being allowed to count in kind, not in kind, but um, what's the term? Um, no, it counted as in kind contribution. Yes, in kind contrib and and it decreases the value right. of um, what what we have been getting or all of the communities around the country have been getting from their cable providers. And <coughs> it will, it's been determined from analysts who've looked at this that that will allow them not to pay very much to communities at all, which will undercut the funding for There's the also appliances. language in this rule change regarding rights of way uh, for cable companies. And I'm not entirely clear on how that works, but the, one of the arguments in favor of this is it would allow quote unquote competition, which is always what you hear when you hear deregulation talk. It's fostering competition. So in theory, a charter or one of those other companies could come in here and challenge Comcast, provided they wanted to build their entirely their own infrastructure in here, and, and no one's going to do that. So it's it's again a facetious argument. And before you vote, I'll just say one more thing: um, if the worst case scenario happens and the funding is affected starting in the first quarter of next year. FCAT will not cease operations completely. We do have some money in the bank. I've been very, very careful with our funding. We, we've spent not a lot of money. Um, we spend money on basic office stuff, insurance, that kind of thing, but we also spend, the bulk of our money gets spent on personnel to go out and do this work, to cover these meetings, to cover these events. We've got enough money probably to last a year. If all the funding we're cut. Um, there's enough cash in the bank right now to be able to cover all expenses for probably a year. And at that point, if it does happen, we can figure out and try to talk about a way. There's always underwriting as a possibility, getting sponsorship. Um, I'm not wild about going down that road because I think that the, the business community, the business people in these communities have a tough enough time you know, they're operating hand to fist. We appreciate the support we get for things like high school basketball and frontier sports and those kinds of things. But I would hate to have to go out hand out, hand out you know, trying to get business owners in small communities to, to save access. How do you get, I mean, if this does happen, uh, what would the cable companies charge you to use the channel 15? Well, this is the billion dollar question, literally. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what that would look like in terms of what the cost would be. It can pretty much be anything they say it is, right. which makes this doubly dangerous. We're not going to end up owing them any money. That wouldn't work. Right. But they could very easily say, okay, so Deerfield gets $80,000 a year. Well, we're going 
we're going to say it costs $70,000 to provide the channels. So now 80000 goes to ten for us. It doesn't affect capital money, but then again, the capital money is pennies on the dollar compared to the operating funds. Yeah. It's a serious situation. Yeah. I wouldn't be I here if it wasn't. I get Thank you. it. Um, is there any possibility they go to local origination again or not likely to do, which means they would actually run the, Comcast would run its own? I, I don't know. I, I certainly don't, I don't think Comcast is going to do anything until they see what the FCC does. I think at that point, the situation with Comcast will clarify, but this isn't as much about Comcast right. it's as, as it is about the federal government trying to rip the rug out from under a service that should, they should be working to foster and encourage. And I, you know, I, I don't want to make this too much about politics, but there have been a number of voices of dissent that have come out of public access. Amy Goodman, David Pakman, <coughs> people that are critics of specifically this administration's policies. I'm not saying that that's the reason this is happening. What I'm saying is that it's a happy accident. And it's one of those things that just makes it it's, it's sort of a value-added thing for people that don't like criticism of certain policies and certain ideologies. So that's just one other angle that I feel like I need to bring out there. Okay, great. Well, thank you, Chris. <coughs> I appreciate the information. We'll sign this letter and get it going. Yeah. Yep. Uh, thank, thank you for your support. Um, I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, you can sign. Uh, those are punched. Uh, why don't oh, I have okay. you sign a clean one? You keep on. Because oh, actually, right. it's going to go via um, an online thing, to. but I would like to send this to uh, McGovern and uh, Markey and yeah. but I, Senator I, Warren. Whoever was going tomorrow, I wanted to make sure that they Yeah, were. oh, Chris. Are you going to the Rural Policy Advisory Commission meeting tomorrow where you could speak to this? I wasn't planning to. Well, here. Okay, but here's a handout. Maybe you can get someone else to go. Okay. How about you can pass? Thank you. Bless you. Don't worry. No cooties. I'm not worried about the cooties. There you go. Thank you. Okay. Minutes. Um, the building commissioner. Um, I'm. It seems to be that no, we can't find record of uh, the appointment. Oh, you didn't make an appointment. Of you well, did, you didn't I, appoint a commissioner. You just appointed a, an assistant. So, oh, should we backdate it, or I'm, can we just make it, or is it well, just do effective today? Well, just do effective today. But I, I mean, I do remember that happening. I don't know why it didn't get into the um, minutes. Trevor but went through. All I know. He, I, he it, thinks it was August 1st, but I, I watched the, the videos hours of it, and that's why I wanted to do this soon. So if I ever have to look through it again, I'll, it'll be up front. But um, I make a motion that we appoint Dick Cal Richard Kalaszewski as our uh, interim building commissioner. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Right. I would like to update you that um, we now have two more applications that came in just yesterday or last night. So okay. I don't know if that's a result of some work people have been doing to get the word out locally. Um, I, I have made so. a few phone calls. Uh, trying and to I know Dick help. was going to go to a building inspector's meeting and try to recruit uh -huh. some people. Uh, since we're on that topic, are we having a committee to... to Interview yeah, this? I was wanting to Can talk be, about that. Can um, I be part of that? Do you have any objections to that? Um, no, I just okay. want to make sure we don't actually start looking at those applications until we have enough oh, qualified sure. people. Well, we've got three applications. Um, so okay. um, I was going to ask you whether you'd like to do that. I'd like sure. to do that. And I think Connor, it would be good for Connor, who will work closely in that office with those kinds of issues might be a good other participant for that. Okay. Um, Do you have other people? I had asked John, but um, I wasn't, he's not being clear about whether he'd want to do that. Okay. Just because as, as another enforcement official. Um, I think we should have John and Dick both. And, uh, no, Dick, no. <laughs> you don't have the person who's in the job. You know, it's not about 
person. I, I oh, shouldn't okay. be part of, you know. Well, at least have him screen the applicants then or something. Well, he will be involved. Okay. Yeah, there's no question. As long as he's involved. He'll be involved. Okay. Great. Uh, the FERCOG hazardous mitigation plan update contract. Well, so we got this grant. Um, Carolyn, do you want to talk about it? Well, um, this or, is. Yeah. Um, we ha it's, two. it's good two for. The same. You have to sign both. You okay. have to sign both. It's a five-year plan, that is usually a um, requirement if you're going to go after any mitigation money. Um, every time there's a disaster, there's a percentage that goes into a pot and that's allocated through uh, mitigation money. But you can't apply for it until you have a hazardous mitigation plan. So our hazardous mitigation plan expires um, this coming year. So we applied for a grant to update it to make sure it meets all the federal standards. And then this allows us to have access to mitigation money. Also, um, it seems like it's a requirement for FEMA. If we get FEMA reimbursement, um, they want to make sure it's you have a up-to-date plan. Okay. So, right. so I, I make a motion serious, to, yeah. to sign the hazardous mitigation plan update assistance for the fur car. Yeah, they will do the plan for it. You know, right. They did the last one, right. probably the one yeah. before. We just It's just a ton of meetings, but... Um, so I second that. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yep. All set. Um, Seventy-five hundred dollars from FEMA and MEMA, um, and we've been fortunate enough to have gift to, to uh, supplant our match and um, cover our match on that, which is twenty-five percent of that. So you want to sign both of these? Yes. Okay. We keep one and Burkhock one and one back. Yeah. We've, we've tap successfully tapped this money in the past, so it is worth pursuing and it is worth doing. Oh, hey. I just remembered that you were at the school things, right? So this is the FERCOG Highway Equipment Lease Rental Contract. Yes, they do an annual sort of large uh, procurement on behalf of Franklin County Towns uh, Highway and Public Works departments and can opt in to uh, lease purchase services equipment. Well, we don't we don't pay extra for this. This is just part of their service, and we just have to agree Correct. to be part of yeah, it. Yeah, we're not okay. paying for that. We're just agreeing to participate by the rules in order to take advantage of that contract. Okay. This is in case we had an emergency, yep. and okay. we then we can just call the state up and they'll send us approved contractors and I mean right. it's already approved pricing and stuff. All right. I, I move to find uh, sign the FERCOG Highway Equipment Lease Rental Contract. I second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, good. Do you, uh, sure. Do you want to sign that as well? Mm -hmm. Here's your so what have we done? Okay. I'm on six, so that's why we're all over here. Oh, okay. We feel better, Carla. Two did minutes, Commissioner. Do you want to hand? Talk to issues for the parties that are present, or as opposed to going right down the agenda. That order. I'm. It's up to you. Uh, the next item is the Dave Prickett Consulting Contract for the USDA grant application. Budget yep. in the DPW budget. I, 
Yeah, so um, we talked about before. Yeah, so this is the application, the fee for the application and the design work for the initial kind of design work for the USDA grant to apply for um, phase one. And so the grant will be, we're applying for is phase one and phase three because we set it up in four phases and South Deerfield plant would be phase one and three. And um, the idea would be if we, <coughs> you know, if we get this grant, we can then go ahead and um, start the design work for both phases so we don't, you know, we don't just have our blinders on for phase one if phase three might affect it. Um, we have another meeting, I think, coming up Friday to kind of talk about calendaring out, you know, how we fund this, how we go to town, um, how we're going to pay for this. Uh, and th this is really just the fee, if you look on page two down the bottom, it's just really the fee for doing the application. Sure. And uh, it has, you know, coordinating with the town, the financial application, the preliminary engineering report, uh, environmental report, all this I think is, he was kind of doing a bit on good faith and has already... You know, I think I have a quote, quote to ready to go. I had go sent ahead. it, I'm sorry, I sent this to council um, for review and they had some changes and I sent they, that to DPC and I have not heard back from them. But oh, do you why wanna, don't you wanna sign a hold it? on to it if there needs to be anything? Yeah, um, okay. just, I did see just those to changes. Be, you saw, I saw the changes but I, I haven't seen it come minor, back from, yeah, they yeah, were. Yeah, it did come back yet, so. Yeah, it was in some of the language of. Wait on this. If, um, like mediation and that so kind I of thing. So I probably want it, yeah, it's probably typical kinds of things. Yep. Nothing you know, substantive to the work itself. <clears throat> How, was that, um, that grant application was for the entire project? No. Just that first phase, phase one. Phase one of it. Yeah, and, and that was one. the way we discussed that it was going to go in phases because of the, they the likelihood of getting money done. Yeah, to get because it. They, they, they would never approve a grant for, I guess, that large of a long, larger project in long term. We thought yeah. we should go for phase one first and um, do everything we can to get that done. And know he's talking with all right. different parties to try and get that to work. So I don't know um. how you want to handle this, if you want to sign this or wait and have, he has the go, go ahead, you know. We could the, vote it and then sign it when he gets, when he comes back or what do you? What do you well, what do you suggest? I don't. I suggest that he respond to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's probably busy. by Wednesday. I suggest you sign it, and then he will know that you've voted to do so. But with, with the I changes made, per I will council, I'll bring back the uh, with the changes that council okay. proposed for your signature at the twenty sixth so meeting okay. of the twenty sixth. If you're supportive of the, you know, the rest is boilerplate. That's yep. what's outstanding. It's the intent. Yeah, but this, this is just for the application, I think, because I don't mm -hmm. think that we've had. Um, an honest discussion about what parts of this we're going to do or Correct. if we're going to do it all. And, You're and, right. and I'm not, I'm not right. no, either I, way. I, but I said, we, I, I asked for bulleted point. We have, you know, a sample that they've right. said. It's so huge. And I said, could you boil that down for us? Of the, of the, end, of the, the end. application, right? What, how, no, what, no. Of phase one? Or yeah, you're thinking of, of phase one. And right, I, I agree. There still needs wanted. to be some, like, what nuts and bolts and stuff. Which on ones we, you know, we might do it all. We might do part, you know, I don't know. Of phase but, one. Correct. Because we, we were looking for this roadmap or mm -hmm. guidance and, right. and, and we got everything there and right and we need to kind of zero that yeah. in a bit and I agree with that we yeah. I think the next step so we have a meeting okay. Friday to talk about you know f the first part of phase one and the application process and then the second okay. meeting is c calendaring out how we you know how we do we have a definitive timeline on the application the most important thing I is think it was done uh, I think it's I think it's done. It's like within a, this week, I think okay. he was finishing it. Because we no need Friday to get that morning. Yeah. Any Friday morning. Well, okay. There is You'll no money there now. Friday. We know that. Right. There is no money there now. No, no. They did, they did four and a half million. When? Recent, very yeah, recent. Very they, recently. There wasn't as of, what, a week ago or so? I think so. So. No, but I, I, I was on the was phone. That's why we were applying, yeah. because there was money. Oh. Well, we'll clarify that. We'll um, have answers Friday, I think. I okay. spent a great deal of time trying to uh, register money, on the online this was application. Money that was chucked in. So it's not. It was it, I don't know. Fun. It was like four hundred million nationwide. Mm -hmm. But then the farm bill is making right. is moving forward. Good. And should be voted because um, the Republicans, of course, mostly it's red states. Right. So the, need it. the Republicans are pushing it through. So that is really good because then that would fund this program. Great. 
Because it's mostly a, no, a red state. What we'll do, why don't we, um, Friday after the meeting, inform you, you know, yeah, everything. What we know. Answer that okay. question, answer your question. Because I have this, I share that question. Mm -hmm. We just need to get it in so we're in line. That's yeah. right. I mean, exactly. That's the whole pressure yeah. here. Right. Okay. And I think he's just about done with it. So as he kind of did this on good faith that we would fall through on that. And then we have to talk about funds for the second half, second <coughs> of engineering out phase one. And I think that's the time we go, okay, well, maybe we can't do all of this in phase one. And what are we going to do? And have, I was really anxious to have Eric and others look at the true engineering stuff and see what, where we're at. Okay. Well, and I think get board's advice. Well, we should have, once we get the application in, we, we will sort of know whether we get approved He or was not. thinking like February yes. might get a soft so yes we will or a, know. absolutely I mean, not. We will have some time to start a discussion, but then we will also know whether we're going to get the four and a half million or not. And then if we get the four and a half million, then uh, that's when we... Then we can roll forward with, with the engineering. Forward. Right. Yep. And, and, and that, we still need to do because it. Because part of that four and a half million is also a 2% loan, 30-year mm -hmm. loan. So then that is definitively... We have to decide what we want to finance under that 2%. Because obviously, as Bruce brought up before, you don't finance, finance like good. fences or right. something that has exactly. a 10-year life when you're to have a 30-year loan. So right. the idea is to be smart about this. But it is an opportunity, and it's about the only opportunity out there. And we, I don't want to make sure we don't miss it. So I would make a recommendation to um, accept the grant and sign the uh, sign the uh, contract with DPC, um, DPC, with the changes that our council has made, providing we don't hear anything back from Dave. Yeah. Second that. Motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So maybe okay. not sign it necessarily. You want to just wait then? Okay. Well, we can always come into the office and sign, right? right? Okay. Actually, can I sign it just in case I'm not around? You're not leaving I'm us sorry. Are you? Are you that <laughs> sick? <laughs> I feel pretty sick. <laughs> Let me just sign it. That, you can't go anywhere without well, the only one signature. But then I'm not feeling All right. like I have to come down here and contaminate people. <laughs> you, just you're going to be sick until shot. February? <laughs> right. yeah, one right. shot deal for Kip. She's not coming back at all. Oh, wait. This is, um, this is only day, um, this would be Kippy anyway. This oh, okay. Just, there's not a. I so then we'll have thing. Kip come in and sign when he's yeah. ready. Yep. Yeah, this is just one signature. Okay. It's fine. See, see, right. Authorizing to proceed. Yes. Yes, we make it. Should we amend our vote so that he has authorization to sign? Sure. Make a motion to allow uh, Chairman Kip Kamosa to sign the DPC contract. And I second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I don't know if I'm supposed to. Okay, we have a one-day special license for Yankee Candle Village on 1219. I make a motion to um, uh, give Yankee Candle a one-day li liquor license for the 19th this of this month. This is the tacky last-minute shopping event. Their well, liability insurance and everything. <laughs> Can I? Why do I have to? <laughs> It says right here, well, tacky last-minute shopping event. Oh, is that what it says? Yeah, it oh, says tacky okay. last-minute <laughs> shopping event. Hardwick Winery. It's really cute. I've asked that. Pat to stop making Oh, second. Those. Sorry. All those in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. It's what they're calling it. Um, just want to mention, while this is on the agenda, you probably all got a, an invitation to Yankee Candle. Yes. Uh, Monday morning at 8.30, they're, where they give their annual gift to... Uh, Waitley and Deerfield, and I asked what was the gift. I couldn't mm -hmm. wait for the surprise, so I asked, and um, why are you giving me this? That was on the back of that, oh, sorry. but I don't think it goes I, with maybe that. Maybe I gave it to you, so I'll oh. keep it. I think, it, yeah. I think and um, uh, my, the response I got, I think I shared with the board, is that they're giving a gift to the police department. <laughs> Great. We thank them for that. I don't know if anyone is planning to attend. Uh, he was doing it right in the middle of the day. It's hard eight, to, no, it's at 8.30 in the morning. I know. Is that the middle of the day? That's the middle of my day, but. <laughs> All right. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. I have two I, ho I hope to. I've gone before, and I hope to go again. Usually the choir I said goes I go and back. sings, and, or the chorus. 
<coughs> okay, um, the classification stipends for the town accountant. That was the next thing you gave me. Yes, okay. But, it, but that's in that. mind. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you want to t take them separately? What's that? Thank you. So this Good evening. I'm Michelle Camosa, Chair of the Personnel Board. And I'm Bruce Hunter, uh, a member of the Personnel Board. Welcome. Thank, Thank you for you. coming tonight. The Personnel Board uh, prepared a memo for tonight's meeting uh, outlining uh, our recommendation on the 2020 classification compensation plan. The Personnel Board reviewed the FY19 co classification comp compensation plan on October 15, 2018 and prepared a fair and equitable recommendation for the FY20 comp uh, classification comp compensation plan. Personnel Board voted 5-0-1, unanimous, to recommend to the Select Board the FY20 classification compensation plan as follows. Increase grade one, step one, to 13.50, which is a 24 cents increase over FY19. This will provide uh, the state minimum wage and entry level employee in the FY20 budget. Although municipal employees are not required to be paid the um, state minimum wage rate, uh, the board decided it would be um, important that we provide an increase to our employees in that method. Item two, and we provided a COLA for employees that were at step 10 in the FY19 classification compensation plan. We established a basis for the COLA increased by utilizing the CPIU for the Northeast Region Bureau of Labor Statistics as a basis for current and future COLA percentages. Uh, recommended on November 5th, 2018, the personnel board meet at a board meeting, the COLA of step 10 plus provided was 2%. Um, the third portion of our recommendation is that we provide a step increase for all employees affected in this classification compensation plan, except as noted in number two, which means anybody step 10 and above will not <coughs> get a step. They would just get a COLA. Our reasoning is a step increase uh, provides for a wage increase ranging from 3.85% to 5.6% with an average of the employees that are affected by this plan, a 4.61% increase in the FY20 budget. The committee unanimously agreed that a step increase adequately provided for an annual raise and a COLA increase, and it is fair and equitable in the step. So that is our presentation on um, what we recommend to the committee, uh, to the select board, and you can take further action as required. So can I just, um, can we flip and just, the item agenda was um, the certification stipend for the town accountant. Can we just do that one first? Because I think that's okay. your last paragraph on here that you were in favor of that, right? I, yes. I remember right from that meeting. Yes. Was a unanimous vote to approve that. And that was a motion was made to recommend the select board to provide uh, town accountant Brenda Hill an annual training certificate stipend of $1,000 to be awarded um, by asterisk in the classification compensation schedule as advised by town council Lisa Mead commencing in FY20. And that was something that town accountant gets certification for. If you don't have the certification, you don't get the the stipend and she has that certification. It's not so. required by law. Correct. Wendy brought it to us as a recommendation. Mm -hmm. uh, we agreed as yep. the board unanimously that uh, that should go forward to your uh, to the select board as a recommendation from the personnel committee. And we decided not to do it as a separate contract, but to note it on the compensation. Yep. That's a recommendation <coughs> of the town council. Well, I'd make a motion to accept that recommendation and. Um, 
appro approve the thousand dollar stipend for Brenda Hill, beginning in FY twenty. Um, I second that. Is there any further discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I just like to note I, I really am appreciative of all the work that Brenda does. Yes. Yes. We are so wicked lucky to have her. There are like hardly any accountants going around. And municipal accountants, I mean. Um, so then going back to compensation, this is um, an air, I don't, do you want to discuss that or somebody else sure. want to go first or? Okay, go so um, I've, <clears throat> so I've struggled with this for a long time. I think I've said it about every meeting, every year, um, as I try to um, get my head around municipal pay and um, the structure that we have compared to the private sector section and how, how do you how do you go about every year of you know what is it, what is a what is a classification plan what um, why do we have steps instead of just you know pay rage you know a, a range um, do we feel when when a person is proficient in their job um, say they're at step 10 is that their proficiency is that where they when they have their top equity um, they get paid what we, what we feel the town should pay for that position when somebody is at full proficiency in that job and um, we slide backwards from that to uh, 10 years or 10 steps or however we decide to do that and uh, we pay somebody less than what we think a professional uh, somebody who is proficient at that job and they as they build equity it build time in and experience um, we figure over 10 years I don't I guess it's a little arbitrary but over 10 years we figure that they get to this spot maybe they start earlier at you know sometimes we bring them in at step two or step three and the town kind of gets a uh, kind of gets what they pay for because they're they're not fully fully proficient at their job yet um, we're kind of limited by our bylaws and we can only hire people in at the lower step, even though somebody could come to us completely qualified and proficient in their <coughs> job. Say a town accountant could come completely proficient in their job. Um, well, the bylaws don't bylaws require don't that. It's that. a policy that the town has been following. Well, the I assumed it was. The say that you can hire somebody higher than grade. Seven. So that's our policy. So that's no, what that's, the, no, that's, that's the bylaw. bylaw. The bylaw says what? We're not what? restricted by bylaws to how much someone can be paid within the grade they can come in and be at 10 yeah but well, it's been what? a policy of okay the town. so that then my my misunderstanding right. that, that it's always been a contention between the you know the personnel board for since i've been here that I and mean, that was a, when people came in and, and the select board would put them in at step five it was it was frustrating to the personnel board because they felt like hey the policy has been that we're going to start somebody at two or three or wherever you know we have that leeway early on when somebody starts if i'm yeah, but I can't speak to that. I've been on of course you can. since October, yep. but I'm explaining my, my my history with it. Yeah, I understand that, but so, uh, I think it's been because of lack of communication. That people my are frustrated between the boards, or is it between yeah communication I think so. between the select board and person? Yes. Yeah. So that was previous. That was, I previous. Think that was previous. So yeah. in my history of being here so far, um, in the three years I've been here previous uh, when it, for, when we first looked at this a couple of years ago there was frustration because previous select boards were hiring people at a higher than two or three um, I guess it's a mute, mute point I, my, what I'm saying is that I think so I have a I have a hard time trying to get this around my head how um, why why somebody automatically gets a step every year or doesn't or it seems like that's <coughs> step is if you decide you're going to hire somebody at, at that is proficient at step 10 and that's where they're going to stay unless there's a cola that comes into play um, town is essentially getting uh, a break on what they're paying that person I mean these somebody could come in and be pretty proficient but because they got hired down at step three maybe got their proficiency went up pretty quickly but they still have to wait several years before they can get to top step um, so 
I'm trying to get my head around. It's a frustration to the it personnel is. committee also mm. because we have no ability and have no backing for evaluation criteria Correct. steps. Yep. We have no backing from anybody in this town. I'm telling you. Yeah. We we have discussed it tried ad nauseum. So years. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's an automatic step, and that's the way it is. And that's what we've been told. Right. It's it's a loophole. I mean, we have nothing. I agree to with you. Proficiency. I agree with you. And I feel like um, so so I struggle. Like so, why do we give? So that so being being that is what it is. Why do we give? Um, the top step, a cost of living raise, and and we don't do it throughout the whole schedule to keep the schedule on on range. Well, let me finish. So on range, so that we're not taking that top step and then essentially making a step eleven because they're just because that person's here they're going to get another raise when the rest of the people aren't getting a cost of living raise. Well, essentially they are because it's worked into that. Well, it works into that step, yes. but but that's just because we've hired them at a no, certain rate. Each step, as an example, each mm -hmm. step has an in, a standard increase. Correct. Seventy-seven cents for the lowest, dollar fifty something for the highest per hour. That's continuous. In that dollar fifty, we considered the total increase of four, on average, about 4.6% per employee, 2% mm -hmm. being the COLA that we associated this year, was part of that four, and the other 2.6 was, was a step for another year of service. I get that, but that, that next step is because they're getting more proficient in their job, yes. not just because they're getting a raise. Um, no. So. That's, that's. We don't know that. We can't make that determination. Right. So what I'm saying is I'm I'm uh, I'm struggling with giving the top the top step a two percent raise based on you know cost of living and not doing a cost of living across the whole board because now your your schedule gets out of whack. No. No. We don't think it does. I think it does because eventually you're, these people at the top are still going up, and yet that that rate is not the whole page is not uh, the whole pay rate structure is not increasing with cost of living. It is. Sure, it, it is. is. It is. It is. Because it's not because you're going to hire somebody else at that in four years from now. That 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 compensation schedule. You're going to hire somebody at step two, right. and it's going to be the same pay that it was four years ago. Right. Right, which is not they, giving that position, that that's page, why, a cost of living. It truly isn't we, increasing 2%. That's why we look at the compensation schedule every year. If we need to eliminate step one, add step 11, that's what needs to be done. Mm. We, uh, but right, we were, what, what did we, we were, do really last year? Because we that. updated it last year. You did. What, no, and, two and years you, ago. Two you, years ago. You, or but, two years ago? Right. But, 18 was the original update from the past so what did, years. So what did we do in 18? 18, we created the um, compensation schedule mm -hmm. with rates. And 19, as, as I understand it, the personnel board recommended the same as we're recommending tonight, but <coughs> a last minute change based on conversations between select board, personnel committee, and private citizens to add a 2% across the board. Um. The problem that I have, and, and, I, and I think the rest of the committee members have, is when you add 2%, the problem with the compensation schedule is there's too much gap between steps. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to look at a two-step gap, 2% 2 gap, right. that makes much more sense to give it across the board. Looking at the schools, there are 3%. Looking at the schools, there are 3% and 3% between their, their grades. Correct. Um, so then when they provide a 2% COLA or over three years, 6% over three years, mm -hmm. you have a 2%, you're making it a 5% raise. If you apply a 2% COLA to this 2020 uh, classification schedule that we propose, you're going to be 
providing raises from six and a half to seven and a half percent per employee. And so part of it, and that'll I'm, happen every year. Yeah, and I'm part of it. I'm, I'm and struggling. And if that's what we want to do, I'm struggling with calling fine. a step a raise. Um, that's that's been my struggle of trying to figure out. You know, I, obviously it's a raise. You're getting more money this year than you did last year. It's obviously a raise of some sort. But are we um, are we viewing that top step of of being proficient in the job and not that anywhere down below. That was the initial intention. You, it was a high, low established. Yeah. You, I, I think you were part of that discussion. It was a high, low established for the, the for the grade. Yeah. And uh, then that 2018 classification compensation schedule was completed. So. But, so that's my struggle between the so two. So I think, and I propose at the same time that if you're going to do that, you should go with a lower increase between the steps. I mm -hmm. proposed a 20-year step. I know, I remember that. And yep. it was not even discussed. Well, we wouldn't be I in the situation today if we had accepted that. And if you use a 3%, as a school does, mm -hmm. for the teachers and IAs, that... Um, just, just, it is not 3%. Well, <coughs> oh, we, yeah, we, we, just let them finish. Excuse me. Okay. Uh, I just don't I, want to I, get I, the, we can I, finish our discussion. If we can finish our discussion. No, stay, stay, stay please. Yeah, stay. No, it's all right. Well, but you're not telling he, the truth. But wait a minute. Everybody. Skip. Skip. There it is, right there. Show me where there's 3%. Skip. Skip. Yeah, you're out of order. Please. Okay. Just. No, you, you, you. We, we can't have this. I'd like just, the personnel board up, please. Yes, yes please. Yes, please. Just surmise that we yeah. really tried to be Sister. very equitable. We tried to be I very equitable that. I believe to that. all the employees. Yep. Um, I think that the employees here, as we've done our research over the lap before Bruce even joined the committee, that we looked at, this is when Doug was here, we mm -hmm. looked at municipalities of same size, and our employees are paid fair, if not better than fair. And I think we also have to look at keeping the whole benefit package that these employees have. I mean, I'm sure I'm talking outside the classification and compensation schedule right now, but they, the health plan that they receive and, and retirement is, is stellar. And I just feel that we, we tried long and hard. <laughs> We've been going through this for years. Right. And we have tried long and hard to be very <coughs> equitable. We felt that the top step 10 would get a COLA and the others would get a step increase. I mean, if it's called a semantics, mm -hmm. I don't know. You know, we could. That's what I've struggled with. Is that semantic of trying to figure out? Like, is it? Does it? Is it? A, is it truly a raise, or is it just them? Um, we made a bargain with them. When you get hired, you're starting at this low rate, and once you get proficient, you're going to be at this rate here. And so it's it's uh, it's inevitable that they're each year as they get proficient, they're moving closer to the to the rate we think that job should pay. That's. Was the understanding, and and so and so I, I feel like well it's not really a raise it's like it's given that they're supposed to eventually get to this rate I get it's a raise because you get more money in your check every year and we got to raise it from people's taxes and that's my that's been my struggle of trying to understand the difference between that and have this education with the public and learn from you as as to where you were coming from that's why we asked you here okay that's <coughs> well, that's where we're coming that. from the, yep. that the step includes the goal. Bottom line. And Bruce, just so I'm clear on this, when you talk uh, a three to five percent increase, that's the percent difference from one step to another. That's correct. correct. Okay. And that's so you're correct. saying typically that's. Uh, I see what you're, you're saying. So when higher, you go from the one higher percent is at the lower step. Yes. Right. I understand. As you're getting them up, and, that, and, and as that, you make more money, you get less increase. And right. so you're. You get percentage-wise, but right. you get the same dollar value. Right. Right. Percentage of your pay, and then so and you're. Um, your point is that the um, step includes an automatic cola yes, every year. That's correct. Because it's been it's because the, the the gap between one step and the other is large. Is is yeah. Okay. That's I'm exactly. Just wanted to hear what your yep. what your thoughts were. Okay. Thank you. Thank right. you. Very Thank much. you. Can I just ask one more question? Yes, of course. Um, we had brought this up last year. You know. Um, you know. Updated it. Do we have some kind of formula to update this on a regular basis? I mean, in other words, some, cl some jobs are going to change in um, what the pay would be, competitive pay. Others, pretty much, this is what you're going to be paid for for doing this job, no matter what kind of thing. And so how do we 
keep the compensation schedule current, I guess, is what my. We just discussed that last week. Because, yeah. you know, remember we had to do a COLA and a, in steps, mm -hmm. you know, a couple of years to catch everybody up because we hadn't done anything for quite a while. So what I was wondering, what is our, we need a formula to keep it or a, or a set way to keep it current. That was the intent of 2018, to keep it current at least for 10 years. I yeah. believe that was when it was established. It was a 10-year high-low. Okay. All right. So if, I was just if trying to in remember. the interim, you know, this is the third year, mm -hmm. if you decide that you would like to reduce, redo the compensation plan to include only a 3% increase between steps, that's your prerogative, and that's mm -hmm. what you can tell us to do, or two and a half, whatever you want. Then you can add a COLA every year. Then it's a little more that accurate. makes a little more sense. But when you provide 4.6% average increase in, in salary to an employee and then add a 2% COLA to it, it's just more than what we felt was necessary to do, to be fair and equitable. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Skip. I'm concerned about the assertion that the teachers, that there is a 3% gap between steps for teachers. Well, I did, so, I, did I looked at it just because I was looking at negotiations. If you take any amount of salary on that front page and then, you know, divide it by the one before that, it's about 3%. Am I wrong? So, yes. Okay. So, I mean, I don't know what, here's, here's what you've got. This is the salary schedule, this is going back. This is the schedule that was in effect for seven. Now I'll take the one that's in effect for this year. Mm -hmm. The lowest salary for someone in a bachelor's degree is $43,700. Now let me point out that if you look at our salary schedule and you look at step one to step 10, the difference between the two of those is that step 10 is 50% greater than step one. So if it was $20 for step one, step 10 would be 30, the compensation plan that we have in town now. So 50% difference. A bachelor's degree, current year, starting salary, $43,747. The top step for a bachelor's degree is 66. That's better than a 50% increase from the lowest step to the top step, not 3% a year. There are some places in there where it is 3%, but going from 59,500 to 64,500 in one year, a $5,000 increase is not 3%. I, can I, I, I don't, we're dealing with the compensation plan for our town employees, not the teachers. I don't, I don't understand. Why do you want to balance the budget on the backs of the town employees? We're not balancing it on them. What, you know, what you're, what you're saying, talking about master's degrees, bachelor's degrees, I mean, <coughs> we can't dictate what people choose to do for a living, you know. I mean, is it fair to say we have a town administrator who gets paid a lot more money than someone in the assessor's office? I mean, it has to do with experience, what their job is, their lie, you know, responsibilities, all those things. If someone that works at town hall doesn't feel they make enough money, then they could become a teacher if they wanted to, if that, if that job pays more. But you can't, it's not fair to say that because a teacher has a master's degree and does this, that gets paid a certain salary that if there's a secretary here, she needs to get the same increase as this teacher. I, I, you know, and the other thing is we don't control what the teachers get. You know, we, we're not involved with that negotiation. Actually, you have, you have the ability to appoint someone, and you've chosen not to do that. Now, why have you chosen not to do that? I don't know. I, I thought I, we did. For what? Skip, didn't we choose somebody? I thought we who chose. Who For what? Who is who, negotiating the contract? Who's negotiating? Is you're doing that? I'm doing it. Trevor. You're doing it. You're doing it for the school. Well, elementary both or? Are, you both also, are, so oh. you missed an opportunity to appoint another person. I thought we only had no, she's, one. No, he's doing it representing. He's representing uh, the school. Yeah. Well, but they could have appointed. Trevor, you could have. I would have suggested that you go to the personnel committee and find someone on the personnel committee 
who would be your representative on that? To uh, just so a moment. Yeah, now, I don't, I don't are we talking that. about the Frontier Regional or We're just the Deerfield? Just Deerfield, Deerfield, Deerfield Elementary Deerfield. School. All right. I didn't, I didn't realize. I know that we had spoken. That um, I, I thought Scott was doing, Scott, Scott's Scott's doing Frontier. Scott's okay. doing Frontier for us. Okay. We're only allowed one person. And we, we have talking Scott. about Frontier. I'm talking about Deerfield Elementary School. Oh, right, We're Deerfield Elementary. We have Trevor. You That's where Trevor. he was. That's where Trevor, he was. But Trevor is also on it on the negotiating team for for, for the representing the school committee. Right. You have some. You could have appointed someone else in addition to having Trevor. You could have, but you failed to do that. I didn't Your choice. Mm -hmm. My point is this: whether you're our teacher, let's go away from the teachers. Let's talk about instructional assistants. Let's talk about nurses. Let's talk about other people. The difference between the lowest step and the high, and they're on steps also, uh, 11 steps on the instructional assistance. Uh, and I'm not sure if there's another one that's in there. Some places another one. Support, there's your support nurses, 10 steps. The difference between the lowest step and the highest step. And I'm going to go back to the teachers because it's the one that I'm most familiar with. Exceeds 50%. The difference, our salary schedule in here, change it if you would like. But I guess I'm reminded of that old adage. Um, those who, those who uh, fail to learn from history are doomed to repeat it. We've been down this route before. I've seen this movie before. The selectmen, for whatever reason, eight, six, eight years ago, uh, just lost track of a salary schedule. Uh, razors didn't come. People got bonuses. We ended up people. We ended up in town with people being paid above the salary schedule that we set. And you've already said that it's a high salary schedule. And I, you know, I, I just don't understand. And I'm sorry, I don't understand what the personnel committee is thinking. Uh, well, why do we want to do this again? Well, Skip, I, I, remember. Just remember, we went through a recession. There was no steps. There was no raises. There was no colas. There was no nothing. That would have been fine if you had kept. And so we got behind, and we we caught up in the last couple of years on the salary schedule. Well, we just basically ignored the salary schedule, and we gave we gave bonuses and raises without regard to salary schedule. And I think the reason the bonuses we, were for people that were covering extra jobs that we didn't have persons in. There was no bonus given for just because you were there. It was for extra work. Come on, you know. Well, I know that we have somebody on the salary schedule who is being paid above the salary schedule because of the bonus that they got four years ago or five years ago, whatever it was. <clears throat> I, we, we set a salary schedule up so that we had a basis. And I have no problem changing the salary schedule. I am concerned about this idea of it creating this essentially grade 11. What are we going to do next year? Another 2% make it a grade 12? And everybody who is not at that top step, step is going to automatically be whatever the distance is, a number of years away from that top step, it's going to, they're never going to reach it. Is that the intent? It is difficult. Uh, I think, is it safe to say that three or four years ago, the morale among the town employees, not, not the school employees, but the town employees, was not what you'd like it to be. That changed with the, with the compensation plan that you approved and that the town meeting approved. Why do you want to throw that out at this point in time is beyond me. I don't, I don't understand why you say we're throwing it out. Could you because that, that is exactly what you're doing. You I want don't to, see why that don't you, at all. Why don't you talk with the town employees and see what their thoughts are? 
See what they think about this proposal. Well, I think that's actually a good idea. So why don't we table this for the moment? I frankly would like well, to see you take the existing salary schedule and add a 2% coal. But What's that's what cost? we did last year and we did the year before. No, we did last year. We didn't we, do it the year before because we didn't have one. That was a brand new schedule the year before. Well, every year that I've sat here, we've done Which that. Which is one year. Well, this He's is my third, third year. Third. Well, it, we didn't have a salary schedule three years ago. Well, whatever it was when Doug left, we, everybody got a raise in the cola. And, and I was, I was. I'm not, Good, I'm glad was, you remembered that way. Well, you, it, that's you exactly what it is. You know, and, and the way I look at this, too, is that I know what the people around here do. And we do have some very dedicated and talented <coughs> people. And I think that they're compensated well. I don't feel guilty or bad or at all thinking that our employees are not getting a fair shake. When I look at their jobs and what they do, and you go out into the real world and look what secretaries and, and things of that sort get, these people are paid as well, if not better. And most of these people that I know of, when, and I've talked with many employees, employers that employ probably in the vicinity of six to 800 people, they don't get these types of raises, you know? Uh, and, and I don't feel bad telling our town employees they're getting a four or 5% raise this year instead of a six or 7% raise. The, I, the raise is not a six or 7% raise. The raise is a 2% raise. Well, we I, have you, people that start at the bottom of the salary schedule with the understanding that over a period of 10 years, they're gonna move to the top. So long as they continue That's been my struggle with that. So long as they do their job as well, they're supposed to do their but job. I, I, I asked the question, is the 3.8% and the 5.5% the difference between, say, a step one and a step two or step seven and step eight? And the answer I got was yes. So if there, somebody's pay is going up 5.5%, it's going up 5.5%. I don't... Yep. And my, my view on that was that it's that the years under tap, <coughs> 10, where we think that job at somebody proficient should be, is um, it, we're getting a deal. We're underpaying that position. I don't, I don't agree with I that. I know. I know you don't. But, but and that's, and I, I've been trying to come around to understand the difference between well, what I'm used to in, in not the real world, the private sector, okay. but the, uh, the difference between that and that we're paying somebody, we're underpaying somebody until they're proficient at step 10. And maybe I, maybe I have this whole thing wrong, but that's kind of where yeah. eventually I'm kind of understanding <coughs> municipal uh, pay scales, and that's kind of how that works. Well, but let, let me add this to it. it is, and I'm, I'm gonna use Wendy's job, not Wendy in particular, just a town administrator. You don't hire a town administrator and say, oh, well, you got 10 years to get proficient at your job. You hire people that, you know, I, you might not know everything, but we're going to hire you based on, you have to have reasonable knowledge on what's going on. And that you get a pay raise every year, not just because you got better at your job, but there's a certain portion of we know it costs more to live. So that, that pay raise is, is twofold. It is, it's costing you more to live, and we all understand that, but it's also you should have learned more and do your job better. To think that you have to have an employee for 10 years before they get really good at their job is ludicrous. Well, then why do we set the rate like that? Because I mean, I it, like, because I we like know. I should be able to hire somebody that I want at step 10 then if I think if they're completely proficient. When, we can't. That's I not mean, true. We, we can, can, apparently. but You can. but We've been chastised for it. But sometimes we don't always know that to be the case. So like <coughs> any employer would, let's say, take an, an EMT. If they have a certain amount of hours or a certain amount of training, you might start them off at a grade three. And, you know, I, if, if all of a sudden this person, come to find out, you know, was an army medic and was a paramedic and did all this other stuff and they're looking for more money and the department head said, look it, you know, this person is really special. And, you know, I, I think that we could make an adjustment and change them from a, a grade five to a grade eight. Well, I didn't know that, did. was, I didn't know we, that yeah. was available because they're, yeah. you know, looking around, there, there are several, you know, times where I thought, well, I don't want that person to stay at that low 
I want them to move up to where I think closer to where we think that job should pay. Well, let me ask but you a question I'm, about that. I'm struggling based, with that. Based on what are you basing that on? Just, you know, it, it gut instinct. But well, um, but it needs to be the, more. That's the problem. No, I know it is. I know, I'm not saying it's, no, but and we've actually, done it, and it's the, the right thing to do. We need evaluations, but it, how do you do that? No, to be, be competitive, we've had to bring in, that's why we had to adjust our pay schedule, because we were bringing in paramedics in at three and four. Mm -hmm. be because the, are the, the rates in our schedule were too low. So, well, apparently, the, but we were getting yelled at for did, doing Did they that. have experience? No, but I, I yes. I, that's the reason, it wasn't, it was the experience factor that you boost them up. But no, but it was also what people were paying. Well, no, I'm, but if you had an experienced paramedic who had five years of experience, yes. I can understand them saying, look, I don't want to start at step one. Right. Yeah. Right. And Absolutely. I can understand you saying, no, we're going to start you in step three, step five, whatever it is. I know. And that's the point that's that I reasonable. made years ago. I mean, I felt, I, I thought it was crazy that in the middle of night, I, I call somebody to that. save my life. Yeah. We're paying them less than what we pay people to mow lawns. And to me, that was just that's unacceptable. Not, well, that's and not that, true but, today. Well, it's darn pretty close. No, we, they're on the same salary schedule. And, and yeah. paramedics are not being paid on grade two, which is where our laborers are being paid. Well, we have some people at mow lawns that make as much money as That's the EMTs. That's not true. Well, it may, be well if it, is. it may be if they've gone up to step 10. Yeah. And if your paramedic gets up to step 10, I can guarantee no, he makes more. Oh, yes. I, I, I totally get that. But my, my statement was somebody that comes in the middle of the night, could have been an EMT, doesn't always have to be a paramedic, it's still the, the knowledge and responsibility that that person has like is much greater than somebody pushing the lawnmower. And you've just told the paramedics that they're not going to get a cost of living. And I don't really know what to do. They're getting a cost of living raise in their they're getting in, a step. They're getting a step, which is a five, it could be anywhere from three to five percent increase in their pay. Part of that is job and performance, part of it is cost of living. But look, let me just, I'm going to, this is the worst case scenario. A uh, teacher on step 13. Hmm. On step 13 last year. Going to step 14 this year. Step 13, bachelor's degree. $58,000, 58,054. Step 14, $64,500. One step. I, I, I think that's ludicrous, frankly. And, and, and I might agree with that, but... Can you just run that again? What did you say? If you look at the 2017-18 salary schedule, yeah. a teacher, <coughs> bachelor's degree, on step 13, mm -hmm. moving up to step 14 the next year, right. going from $58,054 the $64,499. Is that the only one like that? Because everyone yes. else I grabbed was like 3%. Yes. Well, they, they look 3%, don't they? they well, everyone I looked at today, does I that grabbed look any like one 3%? of them. No, but that's the only one. You bet it doesn't. Is that the only one on that schedule like that? Well, that and then, of course, you've got the step 20 in there. Right. And I'm not sure what that is. I, but yeah. once, and, and, and I, I agree with your sentiments on that. But I still don't see why you keep making this comparison to we don't control that. Maybe indirectly, but it's, it's, it's another committee. Town this employees. Committee, you need to take control. Take we can't take control. control. Don't they have unions? They do have a union. Right. Yeah. But you I mean, so, I, I mean, so, so let me su suggest this. And then I'm going to go away because I don't think this is going to go anywhere. The difference between giving a COLA to everyone and not giving a call, uh, giving a call only to those are creating that step 11, which basically ruins the salary schedule. Next year, you're going to do a 12. So let me go back here. The, the cost of that COLA, that 2% COLA, is about 20,000 bucks, 23, I think. What do you think it's going to cost you to negotiate two or three contracts with with lawyers fees. This is cheap. It, I think you have to look at everything. I mean, there's at the senior center, how long did they go with, you know, they still have 
toxic floors over there because we can't seem to give them four or five thousand dollars. I mean, where do you draw the line? I mean, Go we could. Hire. What do you think it's going to cost you to hire a lawyer? Do you think you you got to understand? You were this close two years ago to having unions in here. Go back to doing the same thing that you were doing that was happening. Not you, that, that was happening five years ago, and it's not going to take employees five years to say, we're unionizing. You guys can go stick it. Well, the schools get it, right? Then they're, you know, schools get it. They look at the schools and they say, look at what the schools get. What can we get if we negotiate? Wow. I, you, you have the police department negotiated. Until, what, three years ago, four years ago there was, or five, whatever it was, there was no Six. Union in the in the uh, police department. Six years. It's been why don't you why don't you take a look and see years. what Six that cost you? Yep. This two that two percent call is cheap compared to what what the, the the change that took place to the cost of running the police department. I'm done. I you know I've said what I've said, and it, you know it's mm -hmm. my my concern is that we simply don't go back to where we were. And, and what I'm seeing here is that. Well, that's why I'm hoping we can come up with some plan to keep this updated. I mean, if the, the personnel committee wants to go in and rewrite the, the, the schedule for the coming years, uh, I have no problem with that. I, but I do have a problem with simply ignoring calls. Right. They are doing Thank you. That. <laughs> Thank you for listening to me. Sure. Thank you, Skip. Thank yeah, you, Skip. Thank you, Skip. Uh, well, what would you like to do with this? Table next meeting. I think, it, I think it's going to. Yeah, what, what's the harm? I mean, we're not going right. to today. No. Um, I just. Yeah, but is there. Is there a, I mean, we've talked about. Asking the departments to do level services. So why don't we take the personnel committee's recommendation and have them budget in their um, budgets, you Let's know, with just the steps. Okay. And then we can look at where yeah, we're we at that. as we go on. Because okay. this is not going to be, it doesn't matter if you kick it to next meeting. Right. Yeah. We, we need to discuss we'll this. This, take, this will take multiple meetings to try to discuss because okay. my, my concern is you want it level every year of, of some increase. So if we do a COLA of 2% or, or, one. or 1 or 1.5, one whatever. But the idea is you, you have sort of a more even budgeting over a period of time. The problem is if our compensation schedule gets out of whack to, you know, we don't do anything with it or keep an eye on it or whatever, we don't have a formula for updating, we then we have a big jump and we can't afford that. Well, that's kind of what, you know, what Skip was saying is that, well, you know, by giving a 2% COLA, you, you, you create this grade 11. But if you think about it, I mean, right back when we well, started Kip, this. What happened, truly what happened was we because of the recession in 2008. Oh, no. I, I get we it. didn't do anything for a few years. And so what happened is truly it did get out of whack. And, and, and I get that. So uh, we but, need but a I'm way saying is that every year, if, if every year you give people a step increase, whether you do the coal or not, the, every year the compensation schedule is gonna be out of whack. You know, you're, you're constantly gonna have to adjust it. So, you know, one of the things is I, I did like Bruce's idea of having greater number of steps and having an equal percentage between the two. And then the way you could do it is once you develop that, then every year you just raise your plan by 2%. Well, that's what I, that's my point of keeping thing. the plan yeah. the same. Keep the plan the same, but you just raise it every but 2%. But you have to come up with a formula that people will agree to. And this is not a one this, meeting. This is just us. Discuss. Aren't we the people that have to agree to it? Uh, no. no. The Finance Committee should recommend it. The Personnel Committee should be involved. This is a multi-meeting kind of thing. Right. You, can't, you, you, you can't have people. You've got to get everybody on the same page. Okay. Or most. Or most people on the okay. same page. We, we, but my concern 
we need to have some kind of mechanism to, to keep current because we can't afford a big jump every couple of years. Right. And I get the fact you can't afford 7% or whatever. I mean, 7%, nobody gets 7%. Um, but on the other hand, it is important to have, a, you know, to take in consideration stuff. Just so. let me throw one thing in here. The, You're not the, allowed. The difference between steps on each grade level was exactly the same. It was the way I put it together. It wasn't, you know, I understand that if, if I know the argument was going to be over percentages, I would make sure the percentage was the same across the, not the dollar amount. But the dollar amount is the same going across the scale. We, we just, we have to come up with some kind of formula that keeps it current. And that's, that's, that's and I would like us to agree on that before we just do another random, right. well, whatever. I, I mean, I, I can see both sides of the argument. Mm -hmm. And I am very sympathetic. Even, even we have good employees. Right. You want to keep the good employees. I get it. Because what happens is good employees have options, and they will go elsewhere. And so if you want to keep your good employees, you have to make an effort to value them. But on the other hand, we need to have a compensation schedule that is doable, so. And is level of some sort, mm -hmm. some mechanism. So it's, it's going to be a multi, multiple right. meeting kind of thing. So we'll talk about this in the future. Yes. Okay. The next thing is, uh, are we going to vote to place on uh, the following on the May 6, 2019 annual election ballot? I think we already voted. I we, think this, I think is we just, yeah, this is just the language this because the you language. need that for okay. the town uh, clerk to put on the local. I've read it and I'm good with it. Me too. I've moved that we um, put this language on for. Uh, so, do you want to read the language into this? This is the vote to place. Yeah. You so already voted to do it. Here's just the language that we you need. Well, we the town to already voted oh, in 2014. Yeah. Well, the town had a what? It was a referendum. This petition came up vote the other on. Night. Yeah, you already voted to do this, do this. But this is just the language that. We has send a, from you. The select board vote or the yeah. town meeting vote? Town, town meeting, meeting vote. vote had a petition article and voted to instruct or advise or recommend to the select board. And you let it lay idle for a couple of years. Because we forgot about and, it. Because uh, you forgot about it. And then I think more recently you spoke with um, the Joe assessors Tadro. about it. Well, that's me too. <laughs> so last night at the select, uh, right. at the finance committee meeting, we discussed this a bit and, and people wanted a little bit more background on where this came from and that. So I didn't realize that, it, I didn't remember that we, that the town folks had voted to get We're that. one of the few towns that still um, because collect. Because you're collect. obviously giving away revenue that we're sorely needing. But I get, you know, it's very hard for farmers to make a living anyway. Yeah, it doesn't, it's not very much money and it co I, I costs so that. much. To but so are dog licenses. They're not a lot of money either. So why do we give the law requires the state law requires that I just pick I, that I, I, because somebody else mentioned but that. some of this stuff I, I get it not it's only it's the election. animals but it's the, 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 the stuff is so valuable I mean I actually have received two tax bills for a penny and it, it costs the more, more to yeah it, it, well, that, you know, that was my 50 cents to get me the bill night, like how much like, effort does it take in the assessor's yeah. office to bill for five well John Cordero told me it really it costs it costs more almost as much that right. as much as we collect yeah. right to to process the bills because they have to well, go out then and update the, the animals every year yeah this so. this, yeah, is this is leaving is it up to the ballot it's yeah, a ballot, ballot question okay. so everyone in town gets to vote so, right. but you so already you, voted to do this you just we didn't have language right. at that point so here it is so somebody I, made a motion i made the motion to i'll second the motion oh, is there any further discussion nope so all right at, all uh, those in favor aye aye the language as in your on your agenda will be in the minutes okay right Thank you. What is a business card signature? Oh, is it in here? I'm not sure we found it. Uh, so did you see something in your packet? Because I, we had it and it passed around the office. Okay. Um, I think we'll have to take it up at the next meeting, or one of you will have to come in. It's uh, something it has to. Uh, it's uh, from the treasurer's office. Um, Sorry, I don't. I Sorry. think Diana had it, and she said she was going to look for it, and didn't get back to me. So maybe I. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that, and That's I right. apologize right. to the. No it, it's a internal um, uh, procedure. Is it like signing stuff. Yeah. 
No, it's a business. It's a. Oh, business cards. Right. Gotcha. Gotcha. Like a credit card kind yep. of thing. Yep. Oh, okay. okay. The 2020 liquor license renewals. So it's that There's, time of year again. So these are the. That's okay. the list. This is the list. The only question I have is, let's look at this real quickly, is on Magic Wings, mm -hmm. uh, George Miller is the owner. Is, was that George? Is there a George Jr.? No, it's his daughter is doing that. But sure. I don't, unless he's a manager. But was no, George the he owner? He passed away. He did right. pass away, and so I think his daughter, is, yeah. his daughter is the manager now. Um, so, yeah, we should renew that one. I know then. Pat has spent a lot of time getting these in order and updating them, but you're right, yep. that one needs updating. Um, I make a motion that we approve these as presented, except for the Magic Wings one. We could update the owner manager. Second. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Do we need to read the names or? You, if you'd like to. Okay, so um, 2019 liquor license renewals, historic Deerfield, Deerfield Inn, Hotel Warren, Magic Wings Corp. We're waiting to get uh, current manager owner, um, the tavern, the walk to um, Wolfie's Restaurant. Uh, Polish American Citizens Club and Giovanni Figs restaurant, and those are all alcohol on premise. Then all alcohol off premise is the Deerfield Spirit Shop and Purple Meadow Ventures DBA Deerfield River Liquors. Wine and Malt off pre premise is Circle K Massachusetts DBA Circle K Deerfield Convenience Store. Um, uh, Visam, which is Inc., which is DBA Conway Road Neighbors, Bittersweet Bakery and Cafe LLC, and Farmer Series um, Farmer Series Pouring, which is the Berkshire Brewing Company, is a pouring license. Didn't, didn't we do Cheslick's Market? Uh, I don't see it in here. Do we have Cheslick's? Yes, Wendy, they... didn't we have? Didn't we issue one to Cheslick's Market? Yes, we did. You did. I uh, will ask her about that. Okay, so we'll have a couple to redo next. Meeting? Um, or do you have it? We we'll have some more. Um, maybe yes, maybe all nice. the paperwork isn't Just in yet. Okay, I'll put that back. Okay, we'll put that over here. And um, then Berkshire Brewing Company has a farmer's pouring license. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we'll get an answer on Cheslick's and the. Um, manager on magic wings. Well, you know, it may not be here, but it may actually be in here. You know, you're not signing all of them. I don't know. Do you want okay. me to go through them? No, this okay. is one because oh, there's a change gotcha. of manager. Okay. On, and that's one. And then I have renewals on the, um, uh, I have those who are, have, are not renewing. Um, Which are? Do we, um, on the change of manager? Wait, did you vote that already? Yes. Okay. Is so we have a change of manager, manager, manager for um, neighbors, and um, and that's uh, and that you do sign. That is uh, Renee Sharma is the new manager. Is that the idea? Yeah, it says right there. Don't they usually come before us with the change of manager? I asked Pat to call them. I don't know what happened to that. So when's it effective? Oh. Well, oh, so yeah, this has two, the old you know, one. Calendar year. This has the old, same last name, but different first name. Um, I understand they changed a long time ago, but it's just coming to us now. So okay, you can wait. We can bring him in on the twenty sixth. I don't know what the outcome. I had asked her to call because I thought you would want the manager here. But. Well, we usually interview him at least. Mm -hmm. Well, we can wait on that. It's okay. Okay. You don't have to. I mean, them. they're. I'm trying to find the original for this. Um, no, I think they've been I mean, it's managers so already far. changed. It's just that it should have come before us. That's all. Okay. 
Oh, last all you manager. sign is the front page. Yeah. yeah. No, I was just looking at who was. When did when did that t manager take? Uh, it, uh, let's take see. well, it's on the license now, but it, yeah, she believed it happened a while ago. So. I think he had. I think I think the original person had gone away, and so the relatives taking over. If I remember right, just talking to him. At I the have store. very little information. Yep. Sorry. Okay. So we were going to wait on that, or you want to go ahead anyway? I mean, if it's already in effect. It's in the family. And it's the same fa it's yeah. in the family. Yeah. I think All it's right. the same family. It's a wife or something. Just, give it pack. Just okay. the top page. Pictures? Apparently. All right. Just the top page. Should we vote it? The manager change. I make a motion to, for the manager change at Conway Neighbors, which is Massam Inc., TBA Conway Road Neighbors. Um, Could could we, um, Wendy? I I oh. still think they should make an effort to come in and introduce themselves. To the us. last manager was uh, Rena Sharma, and the new manager is Rena Sharma. No, no it's uh, Vivek Sharma. Well, this is not updated then. I know. I just noted on this right. list that that also needs to be updated. Okay. But it was up. It was up to date before. You voted, so. Um, well, and then I have the um, those that have can, can not re have failed to renew. Can you just have them schedule to yep, come in and I have see that us? On my Thank list. You. I mean, I don't want to be anti-business, but I kind of feel like it's important. You want to make okay. sure the person has tips, training, that kind of thing. I mean, you know, just some basic stuff. Um. And then he, there are these that are not renewing. I think you have them in your package. Do we have oh, to? Savages. Do we have to sign off on it? Robert Stockwell. On what? On someone that's not renewing. No, well, so. it has a place for signatures, but I don't have an unpunched version of that, so I'm not really sure. Do you want us to sign these or not? Or um, what do we have to do with these? I think uh, Pat has to, it has to be mailed back to the ABCC. Did we sign this? Go ahead. Wouldn't hurt. Right. <laughs> But it's got her note on there, so I, there must be an original, and it's just not in yeah. my packet. So I think we would have sent it with her right in there, so. What? You must have an original there. That's, I, no. I'm looking again, but it. Yeah, I wouldn't sign it either. Okay. Wait. We'll wait and do that next time. Okay. Uh, it went, issues does somebody discussed? have it in case it went into you know, nope. someone else's I don't have that at all. Okay. Nothing to do with that stuff. Uh, issues for discussion at the Rural Issues Listening Center session? Yes. Well, I'm, I'm, I, I really can't go tomorrow night because I, I need to stay home and get rid of this cold. I'm trying to get you into this. Mm -hmm. So I think you were going to go, Trevor, because we were both going to go. I was going to go, um, and then I was also going to go to DA later on. But um, So the items that we wanted to discuss... Um, I just wanted us to bring our letter, include our letter that we're sending to the FCC. I agree with that. Here we go. Found it. Oh. It's in the wrong pile. Perfect. Um, obviously, school funding. Yes. But we need to get the zip code thing straightened out before the school funding formula is... Although, um, do we not? Do we know whether it's going to hurt us or help us? Right. Oh, it's going to hurt us at the moment. You know that. Okay. Yes, for sure. It's three or four hundred thousand dollars a year. So we need to get. It's not a crisis because the million dollar tax was deemed illegal, and that was the source of the new funding. So there's no new funding right. at this moment. But everyone is complaining about the formula. So something will be done. Um, so we need to keep on top of this. Um, and so I want to make sure that we show up to the Rural School Financing and Sparsity Aid meeting on January 10th over in Gill. Oh, that's what I had. That's something else going on on the 10th. Too. And then on, Ju on um, June 13th is the zip code meeting. I've got a school committee meeting that 
on the All 10th. Right. Well, I'm, I'll go there. But, but I'll do the rural policy. Okay. But it's, um, it's really critical that we get on this. So I was hoping that you would support sending a letter to Adam Hine, who seems to be the lead person on this, mm -hmm. after working with Steve. Right. And, and that, you know, a brief Natalie and all that. So, but I just don't want it to get lost. And Adam seems to be the, you know, the point person. So if we could write a letter to Adam that we are concerned about zip codes and this is their situation. Okay. So I think we should like send it. Um, should we also copy? Um, well, yes, we'll copy Natalie, we'll copy Joe, copy Cumberford, Joe Cumberford, and all that, but... They'll be there, I'm sure. Yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that Adam is... Steve told me he's the one that's spearheading this, trying to get this all straightened out for all these communities. So, um, I mean, Buckland and Shelburne have been messed I up know. for years. Yeah. And that, and that involves meal taxes and everything else. Three years ago, I remember, yeah. at the Small Town Summit, that was the, one of the major issues. Yeah. So it's still an issue, but we need, we need to get ours straightened out. And then we need to keep working on that formula, because I think we need a waiver for, you know, um, some of the other factors that are involved in the wealth formula, which we can work on. Um, um, why, doesn't this, why don't school committee members come to talk about it? Why don't they? Because or, no or one, the this is extra work that no one wants to talk about <coughs> until it's too late, and we know it's coming. We went to the meeting. Skip, Skip was there, and it, it was at least three or four hundred thousand dollars cut to us. It's, it's, I mean, it's serious. And that's under, just under the proposed, one of the proposed formulas. It, it, it could seems be more. to me that that's where the major, you know, well, I was working on the with should the, be from the school committee and the school well, administrators. Well, Patty, I, I sat down with Patty Cavanaugh before she left. And we were reaching out to the Department of Revenue and trying to get all that started in the school department of education. And then she know, left. Woody Woodpecker. I don't know. What I know. So, so I'm the only one that's been working on this. And we, we, because I know it's coming. We know it's coming. Well, how do we deal with that when it's such, it's a federal issue? Well, here, I have a suggestion. You've got no, no. The two of you are going to the MMA. No, no, but it's, it's how they calculate go to the, the wealth. Factor. Go to the yeah. MMA session on this because there will be one. Yes. See what, Don't worry. What else we will. Is, that's that's where you'll get good this, marching but, orders of But I just want since Steve recommended that we talk to Adam Hines, so I would like a formal, he's not our, he's not right. our senator, so I would like a formal letter sent to him that we are requesting his, you know, his help in this consideration. Sure. I mean, whatever. Okay. We just have to stay on top of it. Because we can't, we can't afford not to have more money for schools. And to get it cut would be, is devastating. I mean, Where you're going to see it is in, for the town side, is in the state aid. Chair Right. For, for Frontier, their state aid is going to drop. Guess what? What they're going to ask us to provide in every other town is going to be an increase. Yep. Um, and I'm not sure whether they know it or not, to be honest with you. Frontier knows it. But the other problem, of course, is I'm not actually sure what, how that, how that's going to be dealt with at Frontier, since it's just, it's Deerfield that's the, the wealthy, quote, wealthy town. You, well, might be, you, might, you mean it might be diluted with the other three towns? I, I don't know what it's going to, what's going to happen. I mean, someplace along the way, I assume that the dollars that come in in state aid is going to drop, but someplace that funding formula is going to get Mm -hmm. We're going to get whacked on that one. Yeah, I don't know. That's I'm just kept, I'm, this was, I was just looking at the elementary school. Yeah, but we're going to hit both. I, I, I agree that so. it, we might get hit on the frontier level too. But I know we're going to get this hit on the elementary school level. And we need to be focused on that. And I just don't want it to get forgotten. Okay. So obviously we got school aid. Okay. Um, how about more funding for infrastructure repair. I mean, 
Yeah. We, we want Not the truth. We need to continue Chapter 90 um, funding. I mean, all this is, you know, I mean, I think everybody knows it. There's just no money. I know. So I mean, it, like, how do all you, these things are money. Really. I know. So I so don't. So you go there and you beat the drum, and like they're like, oh, show me the pot of money, I'll send it to you. Well, I, I had this thought when they were here a few weeks ago to do the 25% design hearing on Route 5 and 10, and it's basically repaving. And I, right. it looks pretty good because I drive around local roads right. and they look terrible. And you know, somehow I feel like, yeah, that's, there's a cost benefit, and they know it, and they are able to do that. But we can't keep up. You know, um, it just the disparity between right. the quality of state roads. I know they're more heavily traveled, but um, it's true. It's just a real imbalance. I mean, I, one sixteen is a roads. mess right now, though, in Deerfield. Mm -hmm. Going up towards Conway is mm -hmm. bad. Mm -hmm. You get to Conway, it looks great. They do these things in sections. Nice and smooth. I know yeah. they do. I know. Our year, hopefully, is next year, but I don't know that for sure. But I have it's not in heard bad. that it's it bad, is. It's in okay. bad shape. Yeah, I don't. So we have an appointment this evening for yes. the Town Common Committee. I'm Pam Predmore? Yep, I make a motion to appoint Pam Predmore to the Town Common Committee. Ad hoc Second. committee. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, right. you, Thank you, Pam. Thank you, Pam. Thank you. Wendy, do you have anything you'd like to share with us? Oh, um, well, you, I've got you scheduled for the 26th. And Carolyn, you say you cannot be there? Um, right. So do you still want um, the manager of the neighbor's store there at that meeting? Well, I mean, as long as Trevor and okay. Kip I'm verify that there's like tips training. and So a couple things that will be on that agenda. Um, um, sewer abatements. We I have a few. We've actually Trevor happened to be there when someone came by and we explained what's happening. Um, but I'm not sure, you know, what I'll have by then. But I have a couple now. I think um, we will also have um, a permit hearing for Sons Medical Marijuana. Mm -hmm. uh, that's still under the Select Board. There's also mm -hmm. they were, I believe, a, at the Planning Board Monday night about that because it's medical. It's still one of the permits needs to come before the mm -hmm. select board. So that's it's got to be noticed. That'll be in the paper, and that's when we can do that. I think we're doing that, come to think of it. Let me think for a moment. Um, I think that's what you were planning for. No, 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 we might be going to the 29th. I mean the 9th. Oh. I'll check back. Okay. <laughs> okay. Because uh, it, it's the newspaper timing. and then Okay. You yep. meet on a Wednesday. So um, we have some additional licenses, the class one and two cars and some others that you will have as well. I don't know what's going on, uh, what happened. I, I believe Two Feathers is coming back to the planning board. Is he that it? called me tonight and just saying that he was, you know, just wanted to make a mention that he was not on the agenda <coughs> tonight and that he's following the recommendations of the planning board that he went to Monday night, I think, and that is to set a, is to, uh, to submit a new he's, site yeah. plan review. Correct. And once that's done, and however that pans out, he'll come back to see us. So we're just waiting until that's done. Yeah, I think he was, he's going to come in at our July, I mean, I'm sorry, January, January meeting. meeting. Yep. I think it's the first. Yep. And we will also have um, <clears throat> uh, Dave Zamoyski and Zach Smith here. We've got write offs they're bringing to us for okay. the Deerfield. Ambulance service, Deerfield DMS, and then some for SCEMS, which was have done they been already, touched? No? Well, we did, we did some. It. Oh, okay. I but didn't know there were some left. I, we thought we'd collect the others, and they're okay. not. So. But I asked them to come because it's substantial. Okay. It's substantial. So, um, the only other thing is, and I, I still not um, official uh, because I haven't figured out exactly when, but I will be retiring in the rather near future and um, as soon as I can figure it out there are it's now I understand why it took Dick so long because there's a lot of you know different pieces to the state retirement puzzle that you have to figure out I'll let you know I'll send give you a formal notice of that oh, stretch it out as long as you can oh well <laughs> and, a, and a proposal for how you go forward Thank and you. also you know related to that um, 
uh, Connor um, mm. Robichaud, who is the new assistant town administrator, will be here starting Monday. And um, Diana and I and Pat has also been in the loop about, you know, the distribution of work and, and um, we have some good ideas about work he can get going on. We'll have him in, in our office space for now and you'll figure out what to do from there. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Don't. That's I, probably why I got sick. <laughs> because Well, you, you got I'm yourself in quite a frenzy this week, so. I think uh, just, I don't want you to feel that uh, I'd like to spend a little time with him too when you're done, just to kind of... With who, Connor? Connor, yeah, just to you can give him my two cents uh, as far as uh, how he can help the town deal with people who come in to uh, apply for anything, you know, getting all the proper paperwork for the planning board well, of the ZBA we, and stuff like that. We, we're thinking that we would slowly ramp up that part of his job, use this first early few weeks to... Uh, no, because his job is assistant town administrator, and the, it's it, it's not just planning. I get the it. Planning office, very cognizant of that. That was the whole. That's the whole so it was, idea. It wasn't yeah. the whole idea, but it was oh. aha, an, a good opportunity mm -hmm. to bring back what we all agreed was a necessary <coughs> role for a focused staff person to have to be a person that takes in the permits, that is the point person with all the land use boards instead here and there. And also has, um, you know, fairly sophisticated knowledge. He he needs some more training in that area, mm -hmm. but I know he's been doing that on his own, and he's been working in a regional planning agency. So, um, no problem. I just yeah. want to let you know that that we're not going to jump into that. No, because, I get it. I, I, because it, you know, there's bigger conversations with. Oh, absolutely. You know, it, it means a change of how we've been doing business. So. It, it really is not that complicated. It's, it's just that there does, you know, if, if Dick happens to be in the office when people come in, they get the information. But if he happens to be out, that's when it seems to have fallen apart. And, you know, I really think within a half hour to 40 minutes, you could, I could show him the forms and everything that needs to happen. And well, we, we can do that, too. Okay. Um, but I don't want to stop you from having, yeah. Uh, yeah. absolutely, you can, all of you yeah. can, everybody can. Um, it's just that we want to sort of not overwhelm him oh, with things, yeah, absolutely. but he knows that that will be yeah. Yeah. the responsibility. Um, but just really get him acclimated to projects. We, you know, we're talking about also having him be the MVP uh, person. I He's somewhat familiar say, with the, mm -hmm. and we and we did hear that there's going to be another grant round mm -hmm. for that program in January. Uh, Diane and I are meeting with Chris Chris Curtis tomorrow. Talk about the flood. Plain zoning and mapping projects, and we'll, we'll talk about this as well. Is that the FEMA money you're going to talk about, or this under the MVP? MVP. Okay. Because mm -hmm. there was also FEMA money for that, too, mm -hmm. in that Middle Connecticut meeting. That, well, that was a it was a very ago. interesting meeting because uh, you, you came in late that day. Did, did you notice that the map is it's really outside our area? That's Middle Connecticut, not Deerfield River. I know. And then, I know. yeah, so we'll talk. <laughs> yeah, it's not worth getting into. It's really confusing, but. So we also were thinking he could, you know, get more involved with the green communities. Um, right now it's, uh, it's mm -hmm. volunteer, it's me, it's Diana's done a lot. Um, we'll be a champion for a lot of those Pat, things. Pat Smith has done our reports. Um, Wendy, what so. I really, really am concerned about is, you know, I mean, it will be awful if we don't have a town administrator for a while. So what we need to do is focus on our priorities. And so our prior, you know, like Trevor's been working on the complete streets. We need to get the complete, you know, that should be moving along. Mm -hmm. And we need mm -hmm. to figure out other things that, we had talked about some solar stuff and, you know, just different right. things that we had talked about is we need to focus on our priorities or, you know, we need to list the priorities. What we do we don't. want Wendy to focus in on before she leaves? And then hand off. Tested, That's my goal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My my priority is you know there were a number of things I wanted to get done and I realized that it'll take some time or much mm -hmm. more time than I had had hoped. Um, or yes, mm -hmm. uh, my priority right now is to put everything in such great order that the, the persons who follow will seamlessly move into things and. I am going to recommend, if, and if she is interested, that you do appoint Diana as the interim town administrator. Choose what you wish to do in terms of timing for a, f a full process to hire somebody. 
but she can hit the ground running. She has been running, and she's deeply involved in all these things. Um, and it would make sense to do that if, if you can all, if you agree, and you can come to terms and all of that. Mm -hmm. Is that it? Well, that's enough. I think I better that's stop okay. there. Yeah. And um, I, I'm sorry. You know, I, I've been leaking this out, and I, I, you know, I'm trying to just gather. It's complicated. I didn't want we it understand. to be this complicated, but it has been. So. Uh, something I'd like to bring up again, and, and I mentioned the first is that I received an email from uh, a gentleman to dealing with uh, school choice, and he wanted uh, me to write some sort of a proclamation request for school choice week. Um, it's nothing that I'm a big fan of, uh, but I just wanted to mention to you people if- Is he uh, promoting in, school choice or is yes. he- Oh, yeah, yeah no thanks. Yeah. <laughs> that's kind of how I, that's, that's what I felt, but I didn't want to not mention it and then yep. say, hey, I didn't like it, so- No, I mean, no, that's fine. If, yeah. if you, any, I mean, you, anybody the board else is wants, welcome to decide, but yeah, I anybody no else wants Thank to you do, for what do it's it, doing so to our I'm not gonna respond. Okay. Thank you. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk briefly about was the, uh, the police union negotiation thing. I saw an email and stuff, mm -hmm. and um, I, I think Kate. I would, I would feel very comfortable if we had Kate involved yes, with this thing. You know, mm -hmm. pretty much all of it. Um, I know that. Uh, I, I just, I think it's the kind of thing that we, we have to have somebody that's knowledgeable in all of the, the things, and and not just a, a negotiator, but understanding the, the laws as well. And then we'll have to appoint definitely, somebody from this Definitely the see, first meeting, this, right? see where things are, yeah. and then, you know, I think it'd be good to have a member of the board and the town administrator at those. Yep. That's how it's been. Mm -hmm. Well, somewhat done. <laughs> well, I, That's how we the, did it before. The when was the first, but I think. Starting? The, do you remember the date we were going to... Uh, well, down. the notice says, I don't know if the date was picked yet. Okay, maybe it was before I, I a think certain I, date. Right. I think and right. Kate is willing to come. Right. Uh, oh, maybe. I, feel, I feel that I learned a, a, a hard lesson mm -hmm. right off when I first became a select board I member, is not having the proper people there and saying the wrong things. Mm -hmm. And, yep. you know, I don't mind doing it and, and being with you, mm -hmm. but, you know, if I start to open my big mouth and, you know, what's coming out is inappropriate, yeah, yeah, the way she could shut us up before, before you know I commit. <laughs> well, yeah, before they do have guns, Kip. <laughs> I know. <but> By <laughs> the way, Kate, Kate is Kate Federoff, who's our yes. labor attorney through our our town council's uh, firm. Mm -hmm. Yep. I'm You're going to think I'm weird, but I'd rather get shot than pay higher taxes. So. <laughs> I, don't I think that's weird. That's the least surprising thing you said. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Yep, that's. <laughs> I love it. I'm going to laugh about that for a <laughs> <laughs> no, well. And cough and laugh. <laughs> I'm done. Do um, you have anything? Um, I had the Deerfield uh, um, after action report for the Deerfield um, River tabletop that we had November right. 3rd. Do you stay on the tabletop in case the river floods? So we had a big table. You we had a huge. A lot of people at that table. Yeah, it was a really good turnout. Yeah. I, I, again, I want to thank everyone that came. Yeah. Um, so this is just a draft plan, but. Um, it was a very good meeting. It was well attended yesterday, and um, basically, uh, I th we need to juice up the emergency management mm -hmm. position. So, and we and we oh. should have emergency management budget line item. I, I, I I've got that, and I was yeah. gonna got a bunch of our budgets. I was gonna bring them forward too. I'll, I, that, I mean, there maybe by the twenty sixth, I'll have something, and I'll you know right. I'll share that with you. Because a lot of you you can access little amounts of money if you have a little bit of matching money. And so we should, you know, I tried to get an idea of what people were talking about, but they're, you know, it seemed like it ranged from 5000 to $15,000. And, and, you know, it, it's, a, it's a small amount of money, but if it's in the line item and you don't spend it, it's no big deal. It just rolls over. But if you if you have it, then you can do certain things, and, and it's worth it. And there's little trainings and stuff. Um, and then the other thing that was particular to us is that we, you know, there was the code red and mm -hmm. um, training and um, uh, free Getting messaging, our messaging and out. all that yep. kind of stuff, which we've already done actually. Mm -hmm. um, Adam yeah, Sokolowski and um, Lori Landkowski McComb have been wonderful. We've been meeting. We finished that up. Um, but one of the things that was particular is that we we should actually meet the, our emergency team 
should get together and review this mm -hmm. ourselves, the whole thing. It's, it's four pages. Yep. But in particular, we should review the p private schools' plans. Because right. if it happened and all the schools are in session, you know, that's like 1,200 extra kids. And you can't send and them all to Eagle Brook because you can't they're, send them because they're on an island. They're on an island. There's not enough food. And I don't think people, it didn't really sink in until we did the tabletop, yeah, correct, that you yeah. couldn't feed those people. Right. It's one thing if Bement wanted to continue to evacuate up there, they could absorb it into the right. community. They, and then you can drop by helicopter food. But you could not, it, you know, it take three or four days of inundation to get down. And there, you're, you're bringing a community of almost a thousand people up there. Mm -hmm. You don't have food. Right. So, um, you know, from Deerfield Academy. So we do yeah. need to coordinate that. That makes sense. And that was the biggest thing. Um, but if the you, emergency management thing, and we're gonna, we're uh, going to... I was just going to gonna say, if you, if, if you get you have water 30 or high enough to... S Eagle Brook is an island. What about this village? Oh, no, this village is fine. It's fine. Yep, I'll show you the maps. Yeah, that's why we went to... The yeah. inundation maps are very descriptive. Right. Yeah. We, we have to get Believe Beaver not, Drive... Because Beaver Drive would be involved right. if, um, in that in those neighborhoods, even if there was a dam on the Connecticut as well. So we've got to get mm -hmm. be more on the that. stick for that. The reason I say that is because almost all of Sunderland and Hadley yes, is gone. lower. Oh yeah, no, than it is. Gone. Yeah. Gone. It is. They're gone. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sunderland's a mess. Sunderland well, that solves is a that mess. rural problem. Yeah, it does. Right. <laughs> Everybody get a boat. Yeah. Sorry. Um, um, and so. Come to my house. I hope. Yeah, good. What That'll we decided good. to do was we would do some of this stuff through the REPC meetings in, in um, January and March. We will sort some of this stuff out. Okay. But um, the thing that wasn't going to be addressed and that we need to address separately is the infrastructure, the, the calling out and the alerts. Because I sit on the Shelburne Control Oversight Committee. Um, I will bring that up and I'll, we'll, set, we'll get a meeting going on that. Yeah. But the how do we get great hydro pr to participate they have to do a, a tabletop mandatory by FERC um, in Before the light. March of you know the spring mm -hmm. of 2019 yep. and they're not going to make it so um, that's how it's going to get sorted out okay can I hit a few things sure um, I just wanted to kind of get on the radar about you know um, what we're looking at for budgets and stuff for the spring, you know, for, for I, can, I don't know if you call them selectman initiatives or, you know, there was a question the other night, are we going to get hit with a large, you know, list of job, uh, of issues um, or projects. projects or, you know, initiatives? Um, and the answer is somewhat yes. I mean, not frivolous, but uh, we obviously, you know, the sewer, um, we really need to look at that because we're to gonna, focus on that. We're going to look at, at. We're going to need about a million dollars to draw that, at those engineering plans in FY20. So I don't know. So we'll discuss how we go about that. Um, if if that's the cho choice of the town or everyone in power, um, I've also had us uh, an initiative for the town common and to start to work on the crosswalks can't really, you know, I've said this a few times at the meetings, I can't really do that until I get um, to understand with the complete streets when that's completed and then work with the state, <coughs> the requirements of where the crosswalks are going to go because they can't really go where they go now. One goes right to a, you know, a curb. I know. So on, you know, so there's a lot of that that's tied in, but I wanted to have um, some money set aside for later in the year once we can get through the complete streets that we have some funding set aside to do uh, an initial con uh, conceptual design and then a, a build design for doing the crosswalks. I mean, it's really the, I mean, my main focus, really my main focus is just making pathways in the common that are safe and wide enough and reset some benches. Not looking to re reinvent the world, you know, the wheel there. We have some really cool I ideas about maybe moving the monuments a little bit so you had more space when we do it. That's where we hold our functions. So there were some ideas on that, but that really needs to get mapped out. The, the critical thing is the sidewalks. And I, I really don't know what that costs, but um, I put a request into the Capital Improvement Planning Committee for to have that on their radar for this year. And Did um, you get that in already? I did. Okay. 
I haven't put the money in for the uh, sewer, but I because I don't really know. I know we don't know yet. I, you know, I know they need it by December first. Well, we're past December first, but Friday. yeah, we yeah we'll work. We're we're waiting for this Friday to kind of. We're working with Brenda, Barbara, Wendy, on uh, you know Kevin, everybody to kind of lay out the calendar of if we were going to go ahead with this. Say we get the grant. How do we come up with the funding? Uh, Skip's going to be there. Or just kind of lay this stuff out, so we so we can plan and s let people understand what what the impacts are going to be. Um, there's been a you know we're still working on the the plan at the uh, frontier. That's still kind of working its way around different revisions of how can we afford this? How can we stretch it out? Let's look at a smaller pie to start. That kind of thing. Um, at at uh, the school committee meeting this week, we um, Bob Lesko was there and was discussing some of the needs at the elementary school. Um, a major need, I mean, we have this need of the flooring, change, ripping out the carpet that's really nasty and putting in the just the tile floors, and we've been doing that, and the capital improvements been, and finance have been improving that every year. Um, so that would continue. And then we're also looking at um, upgrading the bathrooms because they're really old, and a lot of the partitions are just rusting from just overspray and whatever it's just a mess and the floors are a mess so looking at re-epoxying pulling those out getting the metal out and putting in like the antimicrobial partitions maybe the toilets you know we got to hit an estimate roughly for tile walls but that's like low priority because they're not really attractive but they work you know it's really the flooring and the partitions that are really critical um, maybe some lighting to make that more energy efficient and maybe some tiles that are stained that kind of thing not huge dollars, but they add up. Another item was um, was on their radar. Doesn't have to be this year, but is to redo the paving in the part in the front courtyard. It's been chopped up quite a bit. There's a lot of cracks, um, so they were just looking at that. And and then last year they had done some repaving along the gym. It used to catch a bunch of water, and it was just an ice rink there. But somehow they I don't know who did it, but somebody redid the the paving outside the gym north side of the gym and it came out really really good and they want to do that on the opposite side of the gym one little stretch there so those are just kind of some of the things that they have been looking at I'm trying to think if there's anything else that was major that was mainly it was mainly the bathrooms and continuing the floor. So did the schools get their stuff in? No. no but we need to you know so that was a presentation this week last night it's, it's, days go by like crazy. Okay. So. Monday, Monday was it is, last uh, night? Yeah. is a capital improvement meeting. I know. So if there's any possibility, just, I just need to a, put the stuff in. I have in. the sheet of, of the report that was from Bob, and then I, I, we can write out a couple of things. And just I to give people. Forwarded it that. Did you get it today? No. I got one from Tina, that, and so I'll, f I'll forward it on to everybody. They just need so to put the form in so that, I mean, at least it's on their plan, to, whether yeah. it's this year or the next or whatever, right. but it need, there's needs. They just it. need to, uh, because otherwise they're not going to get considered. I know, I know. So, so I'll continue that, working on that. Yeah, they just need to submit something by Monday so that the committee can have it. I talked to um, Ken Cutterback about that. He was going to bring some stuff, but we'll... He just needs to have it in the box. <laughs> I will. Um, I think that's it. Okay. Actually, There's a lot of other things, but two short things. Um, I don't know if I forwarded you by email. I thought I printed it. I don't see it here. I got it, an email from the tech school. Um, I mm -hmm. guess they're beginning their capital work and stuff, and they want it. They were, I think, offering to come to a meeting. Let me just make a note to forward that to you, and we can okay. schedule and hear about what they're doing if you would like that. Um, also, we've set up a meeting with the town buildings advisory committee. Okay. I haven't confirmed with everybody, um, but that's um, Thursday, December 20th. Yeah. <coughs> Let's kick, kick that project okay. off. <clears throat> I'm making a note to send it to George tomorrow. So. <clears throat> well, while we're waiting, is there any public comment? Nobody. <laughs> yeah. Rocky's got something to say. You're part of the administration. You're Rocky, the thank you. Rocky. Make sure you <laughs> oh, tell your Rocky? wife thank yes. you. I think it's wow, from Mrs. Thank Rocky. You. Mrs. Rocky. It's it's from Mrs. really Rocky. nice. Mrs. Rocky. Well, I will, I will toss one more thing. I think Trevor last night, when we were talking about different 
projects and so forth. The finance committee is going to get a sign that's going to hang behind us and say, <laughs> show me, show me the, the money. money. <laughs> yep. So well, I know what they had to mention. We should thank the people behind the uh, deer in Deerfield. Yeah, the women's club. That seems to be going good. Uh, yes. Thank you. A lot, of, thank you, a lot of businesses and people have. I know there's a lot more of them out there here. It was a lovely, lovely event on November 30th. Thank you 30th to the Women's Club and, and all those all kind of supporters. Yeah, a lot of, yeah. a lot of people it have been involved so, with that. It was just such a cheerful, wonderful thing. It was a great event. Thank you for bringing it up, Ruggie. And um, it just, it is. It's so lovely to drive through town to see the lights. It's the, so it's cold. The last <laughs> somber thing I would just say would be that um, I just want to extend my condolences to those that have lost young ones to um, opioid crisis and overdoses recently in town and it, um, it's just heartbreaking that um, these families um, are going through more well, than I, I can imagine. imagine. I and, can't even imagine. Um, no. I've been trying to reach out to figure out what, you know, what can we do? Is there any other, you know, I've asked several people, how, how do we, I know that there's programs, there's addressing this, but we're missing the boat. We're losing talented young people, um, old people, it doesn't matter. We're losing so many different people all around constantly to addiction. And um, I don't know what the answer is, but um, we got to continue to try and reach out to the task force and um, anybody else that can that can help bring this to people's attention. I don't know how. I don't know. I'm at a loss as to what to do. I mean, I know people are aware of it, you know, but I think, reach out. You I think know. it's being attacked from different angles. There the, are the distribution, the prescriptions. They're arresting doctors now, and mm -hmm. every day there's stories about that. There's a lot of programs. There's a lot of support for families and. Um, you know, there's a big debate everywhere about whether we should all be trained in, in uh, with Narcan. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people have done that in this town. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There are lots of people that are trained in it, but it doesn't help. There's no one here to administer it. Right. I'm just talking about the variety of things we're trying to do to help yeah. here. Um, there, there is, I don't, I don't know if there is, but there's a group called al which is... Yes. Alcoholics Anonymous, it's families who have an alcohol, uh, some member who has a problem with alcohol, basically. Yeah, and and I, alcohol. I have to think that perhaps there's a, a group like that. Uh, maybe it is Ellen. Oh, there's many. Yeah. There's yeah. many. So In the recovery project. Yes. But there's right. just there's many. in particular, I have to know that there is help out there where it is, and whether it's the police department or this office in here, somebody that. Task you know, can, can pass that information along. But if you've got a child that's, that has a problem, you need to go and talk with this group and see what they can do for you. I did talk to some, uh, a provider this week about, about this very issue, and, and um, she mentioned the recovery project and, of course, the opioid task force. Um, I, I, I just think we, we need to f figure out maybe we can, you know, Hold, hold a session here, get, make, make somewhere available for people to come and talk about their addiction. And um, it's, it's a tough issue, just, you know. Oh, it's, it's there's one doctor's office sure. alone, there's, you know, thousand, over a thousand people dealing with this, so. We're, we're lucky because I think, uh, compared to other places, because we have this very proactive task force that, mm -hmm. if you read the paper, uh, they're getting grant money all the time and to, to spread it out among all these different ways to uh, address the problem. We have literature on the table in the front of mm -hmm. the town office building here, how to contact, and there's a lot of resource information there. Am I right that the the old Luntz is turning into a recovery center? Is it, uh, yes. It is, right? There, I saw all the work going on there, but I don't know. You know, it seems like a lot of times when I hear people's stories that um, it's so difficult to access a bed in a treatment center if you're not currently addicted at the moment. Like, people recover, but it's a lifelong recovery. So if you feel like you have a need, insurance company doesn't pay, you know, it's limited space. I know it's a bigger than our town to deal with, but I just I wish we could find a way to get people to help when they literally are, like, not at that single moment ODing, you know? Like, sure, you have a bed then, but what about two weeks before where you're really having struggling with the mental illness is another huge part of it and self-medicating it. 
you know, that family was very, very, you know, brave and so thankful that they shared their story in the paper this week. And um, I just, my heart goes out to them. Whatever we can do as a town to help them and others like them, I want to make that available. That's all I have to share. I hate awful. to follow that with something a little, a little, you know, different. Um, I'd sent earlier this week or last weekend, I think, um, the housing um, inventory. Uh, that was the housing. Yes, that's what it was. Uh, how it was a housing production plan. It's due for an update. People talking all the time about all different kinds, senior housing, yes, uh, affordable homes for, you know, starter homes as they used to be called, rental, all of that. Um, and uh, every, there seem to be a lot of conversations about no focus central conversation. I don't know if that's something you want to pursue. I included well, on that list a list of LaRose yeah. at FERCOG. Uh, she said that, you know, they, for, they would be available through DLTA. Um, we didn't really exercise our usage of D DLTA much this year. Um, but that would be something that we could do. Well, and again, Trevor, Trevor yeah. will complain that we need, you know, senior housing money. Mm -hmm. um, I will. For the rural thing? Yes. Okay. Do you make it a list but for me? do you <laughs> want to initiate that process again to update our, our housing production plan or at least take a look at it and say, okay, where do we go well, from here? I, we want senior housing. And I, I'm very sympathetic to low income housing or affordable housing. I'm not saying that. Those are but two different things. I know. Okay. But I'm, <clears throat> I'm not out there to get it because right now we spend almost 70% of our budget on school-related costs. So until the state figures out a different way to finance schools, we, I mean, there's no incentive for us. I'm sorry. I mean, it sounds, I don't mean to mean no. mean or discriminatory or anything it has nothing to do with it it's like trying to balance the budget we struggle every year we level service every year we talk about trying to balance our budget and it's an all year round process and you're hustling money to up you know to all constantly to supplement what taxpayers pay so you can keep delivering services and you're constantly figuring out how do we deliver these services more effectively and more efficiently because we have no more money and we get squeezed every year. So well, it's not that I am against affordable housing. No, but senior housing, housing, if you have senior housing, you, you, you yes. potentially if, if you open up houses. houses. Yes. Right. But you're still, if you could do small projects, it'd be wonderful. Let me. I mean, it sounds awful, but I, right. I'd, I'd, like to add, I'd like to add my two cents with this. Um, we live in a, an area where the population is aging. A lot of young people are moving out of the area because it's very expensive to live in this area. Not just Deerfield, but in this general area. So, you know, building smaller homes, single family homes, that are more affordable, that seniors could move to Deerfield. Or not just seniors, but people maybe in their late 40s, 50s, 60s, that might already have grown children that aren't going through the schools. And how do you, in today's world, how do you build affordable houses? And I've been on that front line for the last 40 years. It's extremely difficult. But it takes a concerted effort all the way around, starting with our zoning bylaws. You know, why do we have to have two-acre piece of land? You know, it just drives up the cost. Right. Well, I can understand because uh, when I bought my farm, the scuttle button town was, oh, you watch, there's going to be 100 houses on that, 100 acres. Well, you know what? It took me 40 years to build one extra one. Um, you know, we, we, we need to, as a community, make the size of building lots much smaller. doesn't mean you gobble up all the farmland. Let's just take, like, Mill Village Road. If you have all of this land, make the building lots along the front frontage smaller and preserve the farmland in the back. Don't put in all the subdivisions, but allow somebody to have smaller lots. The smaller lots, first of all, will cost less money. If there's less land, the taxes will be less. Now you've got this whole, I can't be nice about it, this whole crock that we've sold through the green movement of this um, stretch energy code. Well, you know, for $2,500, 
All you get is one piece of paper that says that your house. I thought the, I thought the building code does incorporate that energy code. Well, on Deerfield, we accepted it, so everybody who wants to build Deerfield. No, no, no. I meant I thought Massachusetts was incorporating the stretch code af eventually. Anyway. Well, they are, but you still have to go through this hers rater. That's what I'm saying. It's twenty five hundred dollars more. That is nothing more than you give the money to a hers rater. Yeah. You know, and, and that's that's one thing. Now. You build a house in this town, you're on average, you're gonna pay $1,500 for a building permit. That's crazy. I mean, the building inspectors, it takes them several hours to review all the plans and stuff like that. They come out to your house on an average of four or five times, and even if it took an hour, so it's six or seven hours. The building permits should be somewhere in the vicinity of six to $700, not $1,500. And if you just keep going down this whole road, you know, if you build smaller houses, the taxes on the house would probably be three thousand dollars instead of six thousand dollars, and these are all the things you have to keep lumping together to make the houses more affordable. And that way, people who you know might live in Amherst would want to move to Deerfield, somebody in their sixties, because they can buy a house that's twelve hundred square feet and they can afford the two or three thousand dollars in property taxes. And I'm not saying that everybody's going to build a smaller house. But there's a big need for that. There is. And one of the problems that I, the biggest problem I see facing Deerfield in the future is that I listen to the news all the time and I've, I go to a lot of these, I guess you want to call them political functions, and the governor in this commonwealth is pushing for housing, mm -hmm. big time. Housing yep. initiative. And we're yep. a target to have somebody come in and buy land and then the state's going to be, be behind them Every which way, oh, that's APR, well, we can do that, we can do that. And then what are we gonna do? We're gonna have something that we don't, we, none of us really like want. You know, yeah, so you need to be, to and you almost had, or yeah. threatened to be had as a yeah, exactly. condo if they had that. But that is actually, a, you know, a, a new housing initiative. It is. And um, although it's, it's not affordable. It's geared it's not towards considered the affordable. part of the no. state. It doesn't help us here. I'm talking, I'm sorry, I'm talking oh, about Sugar Loaf Sugar Loaf gotcha. yeah, right. yep. um, Or Sugar Loaf, sorry, con condos sure. at Sugar Loaf. But, um, you know, I, I think your issues are ones that ought to be raised in any conversation about housing and a housing production plan. You know, and then there's the sewer fees, too. So, um, I, I get it. all but of these things. I, it, you're, it, 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 it really adds up, and, and the whole thing is making it affordable. You know, I, I, you know, homes in the South Deerfield area, the older homes, they, when they resell, they're usually pretty reasonable, and that's why they don't stay on the market. You get homes outside of the area that are bigger and more expensive. Those homes just don't sell. Once you get to that three hundred thousand dollar range, they're houses, not selling. They I don't they sell were. as well as they did. No. They are selling. Most stuff's not on the market very long. What's that? Most things are not on the market very long. That's the complaint. Well, maybe just recently, but of, of, you know, <coughs> that's not, you know, people, these, um, the houses, like I say, in South Deerfield that are selling anywhere from like 150 to 250,000, they don't stay on the market no. very long. But other homes that are 300 to 400, they do stay on the market. Now, of course, you do get homes that sell for five or 600,000, and, you know, there are more wealthier people around, but, you know, that's, that doesn't solve our issue, you know. I'm done. Motion to well, adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank, Thank you. you all.